Welcome everybody to the regular meeting of uh, Municipal Council for the Corporation of the District of Oak Bay, Monday, March 12th. Um, we acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Lekwungen speaking people, who today are uh, known as the uh, Songhees and the Esquimalt nations, and that their historic uh, connection to these lands continue to this day. Please also note that uh, we are video live streaming uh, and, uh, and recording, which will be uh, archived on the municipal website. We have an agenda before us, but I'm going to ask that that agenda, given we had a public, uh, we had public hearings, three public hearings at, at six o'clock today, that we bring those items forward. So I would uh, ask that uh, we amend the agenda and bringing uh, items 30, 31, and 32 from tonight's public hearing uh, to follow consideration of the minutes and the reports section. I'll make so that motion. Seconded. Okay. So uh, moved and seconded to uh, approve the uh, agenda as amended. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, none opposed. Thank you very much. We have the minutes uh, and reports of the public hearing from February 26th. Move approval. Second. Thank you. Move and seconded. Discussion. All in favor, opposed, none opposed. We have minutes from council on the 26th of February also. Move approval. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, opposed, no one opposed, thank you. And then the special council meeting uh, for December the 11th. Now this is a corrected, uh, I think there was some, uh, uh, our staff noticed that, uh, uh, that it hadn't been done appropriately. Um, Ms. Santa Rosa, do you just want to explain what the uh, correction is and how it came about, please? Your Worship, the minutes were corrected to reflect that bylaw numbers 4682 and 4675 from the public hearing were a actually adopted at that meeting as well, okay. and the motions to give third reading were separated out, so there was a correction made to the minutes. Thank you very much. Any questions on that? Okay. I have a motion to uh, mm -hmm. approve as corrected. So moved. Second. And move the second. A discussion. All in favor? Opposed, none opposed, thank you very much. We're now going to move on to item uh, 30. Uh, your your worship, minutes from the special meeting on February 26th as well, please. Move approval. Second. Oh, yes, I guess there was, that's the 26th, sorry. And there was two on that one. Thank you very much for catching that. It's at the uh, top of the next page and I missed that. Moved and seconded. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, none opposed. Thanks for that. Uh, now, we move on to 30, and this has to do with uh, uh, 799 Linkley's Avenue, a heritage uh, designation bylaw, and this is one of the uh, public hearings that we held at 6 o'clock, um, and we have a report from the acting director, which was uh, addressed at the uh, hearing, and uh, we now have a third reading uh, before us. Move third reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. And final adoption, please. Move final adoption. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? No one opposed. Thank you. The motion passes. Now we move on to uh, 1208 Oliver Street. Again, another heritage designation bylaw, and that's bylaw 4707 for third reading, please. Move third Move. reading. Second. Second. A discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. And final adoption, please. Move final adoption. Second. Move and second. A discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. And then the third uh, public hearing related to 1526 Beach Drive, also a heritage designation by law. Third reading, please. Move third reading. Second. Move and second. A discussion. All in favor? Opposed, no one opposed, and then final adoption. Move final adoption. Second. Thank you. Move and second it. Discussion. Seeing uh, no discussion, call the question. All in favor? Opposed, none opposed. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to item number four, which is my remarks, I, and I want to thank all three applicants. Uh, we've seen uh, a, quite a number of people who've come forward uh, to uh, have their homes protected. And it's a great trend. Uh, we encourage uh, uh, people to do that who have properties of historical and uh, heritage significance. 
and we're very grateful to the, the three applicants. These are uh, three lovely homes that will be protected as a result of uh, the final adoption of all of these three bylaws. So uh, our appreciation to the uh, applicants, which I think were, they were, one of them was at the uh, third, uh, no, sorry, at the public hearing, but I don't see them here now. And I also want to take the opportunity for, um, to, to thank the Heritage Commission uh, we did hear from one of the applicants who was very grateful for a very open and uh, uh, and productive process. And part of that process, of course, is the Heritage Commission. And we appreciate that. We see the chair here uh, uh, who uh, wishes to say a few words. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, is that a consensus of council? That we're okay. Yes, we'll just take that out of turn. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Yes, please. And uh, know that you're on TV, so to speak. Uh, you might be on the internet somewhere too. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the owners who were prepared to designate their homes, but I, I would also like to thank your Korean Green and your chair. Oh yes, sorry. Of the Heritage. Sorry. People at home might not know. <laughs> all of us know here. Thank you. I'm Korean Green and I'm chair of the Heritage Commission, and I just want to, on behalf of the Heritage Commission and the community at large, thank Mayor and Council so much for their recognition and their support. Uh, this is precedent setting for the Commission. We have never had so many designations in one fell swoop. So we're hoping this is the beginning of more and thank you so much. Thank you very much. And when you include uh, the, uh, the number of, of uh, heritage revitalization agreement, which also has the effect of protecting the homes, I think just in the last two weeks, I think we've had five uh, with these three tonight and two last time. So um, it, that's great news. Thank you very much. I have three remarks. The first relates to the uh, 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 that uh, to Dave Barrett. We were honored to receive an invitation from the premier to uh, attend the uh, memorial service held at the University of Victoria. And myself and acting mayor um, um, Michelle Kirby attended, uh, and uh, it was very moving. Uh, and at times, I must admit, very funny uh, uh, memorial service. Very much in keeping with. Uh, uh, the uh, the spirit of uh, Mr. Barrett and what he'd done for the um, the province, uh, so uh, we were grateful for that invitation and we attended. I said uh, um, uh, to honor the the memory of uh, Mr. Barrett. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to um, recognize our staff for the efforts that they put together to receive and obtain and apply and obtain a grant for what is known as the Energy Loop. Uh, at the uh, Recreation Center. $668,000 uh, and uh, will be uh, provided by the Gas Tax Strategic Priorities Fund. Uh, and they're 100% dollars. We, uh, we don't need to contribute anything to the project. And it essentially recycles what is energy now is being lost out into the environment. So it's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's hot air <laughs> that uh, we expel right now uh, in order to uh, chill the, um, uh, uh, the skating rink and we're now going to recycle it and it's going to be used as uh, heating for various aspects of the, uh, uh, of the recreation center. Uh, so it really uh, it allows us to uh, uh, achieve our target of uh, high, uh, greenhouse gases that we were supposed to meet a 33% reduction by 2020, we're going to meet it a year early. So we're grateful for staff for that very innovative uh, application and we look forward to the completion. I think I heard it was supposed to be about a year. So uh, thanks to the recreation staff and uh, all those involved. And uh, finally, I want to, uh, to thank members of the fi uh, fire and police department and, uh, and, and Councilor Braithwaite who attended the polar plunge uh, on Sunday. And uh, it was a fundraiser for the Special Olympics. Uh, and I don't think anyone in the wildest dreams had in mind that they were going to be raising well over 20,000. There were police from all over the, the CRD who joined us. Many of them went in. And I was a last minute plunger. And I can tell you, uh, it was cold out there, <laughs> uh, both outside and inside. Anyways, um, and, and a big particular um, uh, notice to uh, our f deputy fire chief who uh, uh, was challenged to stay in the water the longest and 
and he was challenged, of course, by the fire chief to do that. Uh, he stayed in for 13 minutes and as a result raised another $200 and he'll, it'll be more because others are, are providing uh, uh, funding for him. So uh, a great achievement and thank you to the organizers and it was in uh, partnership with the law enforcement Special Olympics Torch Run, uh, which is made up of uh, local enforcement officers. So uh, they were out in large numbers and large numbers of people plunged. And thank you. So we move on now to uh, the public participation period. Uh, and this is an opportunity for uh, 20 minutes to, uh, to hear from people up to three minutes and people are lining up, okay? What I'm gonna suggest is, by the way, that uh, a number of people spoke last time. Uh, so just, you can speak again, uh, and that's fine. Uh, I just encourage you to wait till everyone else has spoken uh, who didn't get a chance last time and I have a list of the people who spoke last time here, if it helps remind those who spoke. Uh, we did hear them last time. So um, the, the way this works, for those of you who haven't been here, uh, please print your name and the municipality of residence. Keep your comments as brief as possible. Please sign the speaker sheet on the podium, which I see being done by the first speaker. Uh, and you will hear a little radar or bell. Uh, it's called radar on my phone and that uh, sounds after three minutes. I will, st I will start the, um, um, I w once you give your name and your municipalities, I will say welcome, and that starts the uh, three minute time. M my time will start when each person gets a copy, please, Mayor, uh, if I may. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. So we're one each here, eh? Thank you. Thank you, so it's, there's a magazine and uh, a presentation. Is that what you want us to have? Uh, that's the script for my uh, oh. three-minute chit-chat. No, the, the, the uh, or less. The three minutes starts when I say the word W E L C O. I got it. So that to answer your question, that uh, handout is the uh, okay. outline. That's Thank great. you. Okay, so your name, please. Thank you, Marin Council. My name is Brad Atchison, and I live at the top of Fairfield Place welcome. on Gonzales Hill, and I'm not from Oak Bay, I'm from Victoria. We welcome all. But Thank we're you. neighbors. Um, we also live next to a rare and endangered, as well as degraded, Gary Oak ecosystem. The problem we're facing with a proposed lot development, albeit on the Victoria side, primarily concerned with climate change mitigation and adaptation in an urban landscape, probably the moral imperative of our era. The tangible and quantitative benefits of the free ecosystem services provided by this lot over the long term far exceeds the market value of the lot that the purchasers paid for. Now some facts. There's a Board of Variance meeting uh, in Victoria on, Mark, on uh, March the 22nd. And that's been used by a variety of stakeholders, including Oak Bay as a firewall to not be involved in that so-called political process. Uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, the District of Oak Bay Council and Mayor have taken the, in my view, and the neighborhood's view, this, including on the Oak Bay side of the border, short-sighted position to date of indicating that this project is an entirely City of Victoria matter. However, this claim is specious, neglectful, and irresponsible because one, the only competent way to manage this ecosystem is uh, to disregard the boundaries, the arbitrary political boundaries among the municipalities. It's an integrated ecosystem management approach to, uh, to actually manage this rare ecosystem. Uh, these types of ecosystems, I know you've got a foundational document uh, that you've, a piece of science that your municipality has prepared, beautiful piece of work, and uh, the few stands that are left of these ecosystems account for 40% of the biodiversity in all the remaining forests in Canada. So they're just, you know, even though you may not see bear running through them. As an abutting neighbor to Gonzales Hill, Oak Bay is in fact a co-steward of this park. Part of the property of that park abuts on your municipality. The proposed lot development will in fact have numerous adverse impacts. And on Friday each you received a 14-page document which is a combination of a report card on the CRD and then secondly a, f a foundational science document that lays out the arguments against any lot development, not just building within the bylaws. 
and the mayor would be pleased to know as a lawyer that in fact in the reading of the, of the Board of Variants bylaw, any concerned parties, including municipalities, can offer an opinion on uh, any of a number of the uh, variances in a Board of Variants hearing. So to use that uh, as an argument against stepping up to the plate and actually rendering the opinion as a stakeholder and a co-steward is, is, as I said, is irresponsible. Ironically, Oak Bay has a, has a significant fine for cutting down Gary Oak trees. And um, so we would expect... Could, in you, the, could you wrap it up now, I, I can. In, in the handout, you've got upcoming meetings that we would hope that Council uh, takes a position on on behalf of that ecosystem. Last piece of science that's come to light are the fault lines in the hill. And Thank you're you. already experiencing some issues there on the other side of the hill. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Atchison. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your name and your community, please. All right. My name is Mary Duty Jones, and I'm from Victoria, and I've been doing heritage work in various forms for, for about 40 years, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, yes. Now, you're, you're, you're seeing a paper go around. This paper is just sample science. Now, I'm going to be as brief as I can. I'm going to focus on science, and I'm going to talk about the science of removing trees, and I know you're aware of it, but this, the person whose papers these are was on the International Panel of, for cli on chi Climate Change that won the Nobel Prize. So it is truly science. Now, before I get into the science, I want to just relate a small incident which does relate to science and the effect of blasting and, and other things on the park. I was standing talking to Brad on the road, and there was just a fringe of tall grass on the edge. And as we stood there, that fringe moved because a quail, the California quail, was using it as cover, which tells you that when they put a big driveway in, you're cutting off their, their land as well. Now, the science I want to talk about is in there. When you remove trees, you are actively hastening climate change. There's no question. It's done by measuring temperatures and things. And secondly, not only that, but around the area of removal is a wide swath, which will choose, I've heard on uh, quirks and quarks about trees talking to each other, but these, this, this swath will be damaged by this effect. And so you add uh, blasting and building process, then it's even worse. You're, you're actually killing a lot of trees very fast. So, the, and the last point I want to make is that the, this is the only park that I know of in the whole area of the whole Vancouver, Victoria general area, not just Victoria. But, you know, like Mount Tolme has lookouts and, and parking places. Well, there is a parking place up there, but much of the woods that are there this was typical of what we had before, and that's mo most the only place where you'll see it. And I'm not sure if there are any quail left anywhere else, for example. And it has not been surveyed, and it needs to be preserved, first of all. So I bring you this message from the quail and the moving grass. Could you please work actively to save this? Thank you very much, Ms. Jones. <coughs> Next speaker, please. My name is Bruce Falan. I live on Bowker Avenue in Oak Bay. Welcome. And I want to address uh, Dr. Nay's resolution. Um, the resolution is titled Secondary Suite Implementation in Oak Bay. The resolution uses the words regulate suites, but it is clear that the intention of the resolution is to legalize suites in Oak Bay. Public policy and legislation must be evidence-based. By evidence-based, I mean that they must be based on solid, reliable evidence that is produced through proper research. There's no evidence in the resolution that our district needs to regulate suites. The district conducted a resident satisfaction survey of over 500 people in the fall of 2016, a year and a half ago. The purpose of the survey was to determine important legal issues to district residents. 
and to determine the directions that the district needs to take in the future. The respondents identified 16 issues in the survey. Not one of the issues was the regulation of secondary suites. In fact, only 6% of the respondents identified allowing suites as an important issue. On the other hand, 40% of the respondents said that sewer treatment and services and attention to our infrastructure are important issues. In 2013, the district conducted a survey before implementing our community plan. The survey report said at page 59 that the survey did not answer the question of whether or not residents wanted new or additional suites in our district. The report went on to say that another survey was needed to provide clarity on this point before a detailed housing strategy could be developed. In the fall of 2016, the district held infill open houses. Afterwards, the district gathered information from over 300 people in a questionnaire about whether or not they wanted secondary suites in their neighborhood. Over 60% said they did not want suites in the neighborhood. So the evidence is clear. <clears throat> there is no evidence that there is a need to legalize or regulate suites in OFA. There is only a very small, almost insignificant minority of residents that think that the legalization of suites is an important issue, and a sizable majority of residents do not want secondary suites in their neighborhoods. Both our community plan and the Local Government Act make it perfectly clear that the plan is just a guide. Our district is not required to carry out anything described in the plan. Our district should not be using our staff's time and our tax dollars to fast track secondary suites when there's no evidence that the majority of Oak Bay residents need them or want them in our district. Council should be using our resources to deal with the basic needs of the community like upgrading our deteriorating infrastructure and secondly to develop a detailed housing strategy before they press forward with the legalizing of suites. Thank you, Mr. Fallon. Next speaker, please. Thank you, Corrine Green, 1059 Roslyn Road. And I was remiss earlier, Mayor and Council, in acknowledging the work of the staff in helping us to bring forward the five Welcome. heritage does it. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Well, I'm finished now anyway. This was your commercial break. <laughs> Thank you. you. You can fill that out after, actually. Or eat it into your three minutes. I wanted to acknowledge the work of, of Deborah Jensen and her staff in helping us okay, in I'll bringing forward the heritage. Tell you what, I'll, I'll re welcome you. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Esther Patterson, Woodlawn Crescent. Welcome. I have a few comments, just uh, additional on th the motion to implement secondary suites and more specifically as it applies to new developments. After months of tracking land applications through the various meetings, obtaining details of the approving officer's report, and finally an answer to a question to council about transfer to the reserve funds, I've learned that Oak Bay really doesn't have a policy for determining contributions to parkland acquisition reserves. As a result, tens of thousands of dollars in community benefits are not being addressed on some land subdivision applications. So no, co no policies on development cost charges, no policies on community amenity contributions, and now none on parkland acquisition reserves. So we really lack some of the fundamental policies that other municipalities already have in place to guide their development. As a result, our conversation always goes back to the OCP. The trouble is that Oak Bay's OCP did not contemplate the loss of over 200 Oak Bay renter households, as detailed in the McClanahan report commissioned by the CRD, nor the impact of speculative investments and short-term rentals on the community. And new secondary suites may benefit and encourage those markets. And also, after a decade, after municipalities were ordered to value their capital assets, that Oak Bay would not have a long-term capital plan or policy to deal with infrastructure. The motion proposed references a UBCM report, which cautions, Enforcement can be costly for local governments. 
The goal of local governments is to build sustainable communities that work in the long term, quick fixes, developments that are forced on communities, and financing approach approaches that push costs onto property taxpayers or reduce co community services are suggested that they will not last because they're going to be unacceptable to residents. The Public Engagement Task Force, chaired by Councillor Nair, Nay, was, that was advised by the consultant that lack of staff resources is a barrier to public engagement. And respectfully, Mr. Mayor, the, acting, the term acting directors simply means that staff some members of staff are being tasked with doing two jobs already, and now it's proposed that we add public engagement and implementation of secondary suites. The reports, the consultants, and some members of council have provided good advice on why this should be deferred till a different point in time. Why not accept that advice and table this motion until we have the resources to do it right? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. My name is Patricia Lane. I am um, from Oak Bay. Welcome. I want to speak to Ms. Nay's motion. Uh, at one of the recent housing discussions, someone said he was opposed to legalizing second suites. He said, I like things the way they are. We all love it here. We all like things the way they are. If we're going to preserve our community, we need to get on with it. Thousands of our neighbors who own or live in second suites and who make massive contributions to our high quality of life deserve action. Those who would house their elderly mom if they could put in a suite deserve to be supported now in their desire for care. Streets that are pitted against each other when one suite gets reported while someone else continues to live in one need a unifying policy today. We need to get a move on supporting businesses on the avenue who are having trouble serving only an older demographic. At the last council meeting that discussed this, someone said, we have enough renters in Oak Bay. Someone sitting in my row said, that's for sure. That sounds like fear and disdain to me. That sounds d divisive. Are those who rent second suites so scary? You decide. Meet the nurse who moved here from the United States to provide her kids with a safer, less polarized place to grow up, and she helps her sister take care of their mom. At a local pet care business, you might meet a UVic student. She works part-time. They need her. She needs the money. Walking on my street, you might meet a recent graduate of the CCPA. She works at a daycare. On the avenue, you might run into a pediatric nurse who provides home care for invalid children. She likes having coffee at the hide and seek. Or another neighbor of ours biking home from work. With her advanced degree from UVic, she works for government and works in her family business in her spare time. At the Jubilee, you might be helped by a fine young man whose dedication to his work as a porter means high quality care for people in hospital who are too sick to move themselves. These are my neighbors, 10 of them and they are 10 of your neighbors too. They all have jobs, they all study hard, or both. They all seek to make the world a better place. Some are older than me, most are younger. Together, they bring in about $120,000 a year into this community in rent alone. They also shop here for groceries, they buy coffee, prescriptions, they go to the pub. Their rent helps seniors stay at home longer, young families buy in, and gives middle-income families some extra money to do renovations. They have five cars between them. If your list of dislikes includes bicycles, you might be out of luck. Three of them have different skin color than me. Could you wrap it up, please? Yeah, four of them are recent immigrants. All of them contribute to the love I have for Oak Bay, just the way it is. Thank you very much. I think we have time for one more speaker. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Margot D'Arcangelo, and yeah, you can 
have to get a little closer because okay. people at home, we might be able to hear you here, but unless you're close to the microphone, uh, they're not going to hear you uh, on the uh, recording. Okay. Start again, please. Uh, my name is Margot D'Arcangelo, and I do live in Oak Bay, and I'm a renter. Welcome. Uh, that sounded like a, an, an apology, almost. <laughs> um, I, I love living in Oak Bay um, because it is a community that is incredibly cared for and nurtured by the people that live here. People who live in Oak Bay choose to live in Oak Bay. And um, I would love to be a homeowner in, in Oak Bay someday. Um, my partner is a, uh, a, an employee of the provincial government, and he also has a freelance business. Um, I work at Victoria Hospice, and I also do consulting on the side. And, um, and we, we can't afford to live in Oak Bay. Uh, and we won't be able to afford to live in Oak Bay um, unless there is some room around um, uh, having partial income. And um, another reason that I would love to live in Oak Bay is I would love to raise my family here, and I would love to be near family that I love. Um, so I feel very, I feel grateful to be part of this neighborhood, and I would love to continue uh, contributing to it. So thank you. That is my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the end of the uh, public participation period. Thank you. Uh, we should thank everyone who came forward. I know it's not always easy speaking in public, so I uh, really appreciate the uh, big cross-section of views that we had here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we move on to the long list of requests for financial assistance. Number six is a overview uh, memo uh, which suggests uh, how we uh, might approach this. Uh, there are 12 requests, and I think I'm going to try to follow a, um, a, a similar pattern for each request. You should be aware that we have for each request your documentation as well as the application and a bit of background information on the memo that I'm just referring to now. Uh, it will be up uh, for council to decide whether or not uh, we move uh, these requests uh, to, uh, to the estimates. Estimates are essentially the budget meetings where we then weigh all of the requests that we have and uh, we make decisions. Tonight is not a decision making, although sometimes we do uh, make exceptions. Uh, on that, we, we might approve some or partially tonight, uh, but by and large what we do is we move the requests or at least the, the uh, additional amounts that we haven't given before to the estimates where it allows us to look at the overall budget picture from what our needs are, what our income is, and how we can uh, balance all of those. So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna start by um, essentially uh, at number seven, which is the Friends of Uplands Park. And I'm not really expecting anyone to make a presentation, but if you're available to answer any questions that uh, council have, we will ask you to come to the microphone just to identify yourself, uh, that you are the applicant, and then we'll see if there's any questions. And then following that, we will have a discussion. So let's start with Ms. Litke. Welcome, Ms. Litke. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, which we have in front of us. And uh, let's see if there are, and it's, it's quite complete as to what you do and mm -hmm. uh, what you've done before. This last year, we, you were given a grant of 2000 This yes. year, you're requesting 2500 Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Let's see if there's any questions from Council. Are there any questions from Ms. Litke? Yes, go ahead, please, uh, Councillor Murdoch. I expected that, Kevin. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be gentle, Margaret. How's that? Yes, I know you will. Uh, certainly no one questions uh, the value of what you do and what you bring to the community in Thank terms you. of extra funding and so forth. Mm -hmm. so my question is really, and everybody here who's here for grants can probably get used to this question. Yes. Uh, there's an ask of uh, 2500 over the last year's 2000 Going That's through right. the numbers, uh, it looks like taking away the large single rope purchase piece uh, that the, the, the overall increase actually, you know, you had about an $800 left over what we gave last year. So I'm just asking why. Why the extra $500? Why the extra $500? Uh, last year, I was able to do a lot more programs than I'm going to be able to do this year. Okay, my husband was very sick, so I was in town. I'm going to be traveling more. And because of that, we will not be getting the donations from uh, participate, participants that come in. Okay, so that's uh, a big one right there. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we have been doing a very, very large outreach project at Trafalgar Park. And uh, 
Uh, Matt Fairbarns has been helping me with all these students. If you look at the, d the uh, details on that, you can see the students have, have dedicated thousands of hours uh, to remove invasive gorse and brooms. So they've done an incredible job. Okay, so what we want to do next fall is we want to do some planting, especially on some of the cliff faces that they have exposed, because otherwise next winter we're going to have huge erosion on those areas. So we're going to have to probably up the $1,000 that I've put down here for stewardship alone, because we're going to be trying to buy uh, native plants. Now, um, we have been fortunate in the past on getting some donations from different organizations, having the Parks Department also give us stuff, but I don't know whether we will be able to get that money or not. Okay? Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Zelko, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, and thank you to uh, to uh, can I say Foop? Um, uh, oh, sure, Foop, friends Foop. of Uplands Park. Uh, yes, a friend of Uplands Park. Very much appreciate all that you do. I I, I do notice, and I do worry that um, mm -hmm. the average age of your organization is unfortunately getting a little up there. Oh, Have, come on, Eric. But the the, the question <laughs> I want to ask is not about yourself, but I do worry about succession Thank planning goodness. and how I, I know. I'd like to support the mm -hmm. succession plan of your organization, and I would imagine that might be part of your activities. Yes, it year. is. We're really trying very hard uh, to get participation from the University of Victoria. We had a university student on our board. Uh, she has just left because she has exams coming up. Okay, um, but she's given us the name of another person that would like to be on that. Uh, we did have two other people come in, but they, it turned out that they had too much work to do at, at university. So those are the kinds of things I'm looking at. I'm also trying to educate the young people of Oak Bay. So you can see I did 103 school programs last year to try and get them really connected with their park and really involved in, in helping to, uh, you know, protect it and create a healthier Gary Oak ecosystem. Absolutely. If I have a supplemental, if I may, please, uh, Chair. Yes, go ahead, please. I appreciate the event that you have coming up on April the 29th yes. in terms of trying to pull together many of the organizations. That's right, and that's going to cost us money because exactly. there are no, no organizations that have money, okay? Amanda uh, Evans from the Greater Victoria Green Team and I came up with this brilliant idea sitting on my uh, sun deck having tea and we've talked to Habitat Acquisition Trust who are totally on to it. Okay, Community of, uh, Association of Oak Bay, Heritage Association of Oak Bay, Brighton Walk, it goes on and on and on. Okay, so I'm trying to get a number of organizations involved in it, some of which will hopefully have uh, tables mm -hmm. demonstrate, but we are going to be the main people putting it on. So thanks. Thank you very much. No other questions. Thank you for your youthful exuberance. Okay, on, and we would like to in invite all of you for supporting the park and all of its yep. events to come to this event and anybody else here in uh, this room to come to our <laughs> event too. We Thank will you. be having a band, the Bald Eagles, Kay. and food. Kay. Thank you. Thank Move you. to refer to estimates. Seconded. Okay, the amount has been requested is $2,500 and that will be sent if this passes to estimates. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? All in favor, opposed, none opposed. Thank you very much. The next is the Oak Bay Volunteer Services Society. Just introduce yourself, please. Good evening. My name is Renee Lormichael Branson. I'm the executive director. Yes. Welcome. Let's see if there's any questions. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, 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 sorry, excuse me. Um, I'm a volunteer, so I, I would I've I think ste step there out. There are two of volunteers side. at the table. Yes. Um, should I declare a conflict of interest? I don't know. I, 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 it's no typically financial. the executive members, but let's look to Ms. Santa Rosa for advice on this. <laughs> the conflict of interest would arise if you're a member of the society board. If you're simply a volunteer, then. Okay. Thank you. So let's thank you very much for right. that. Um, now, uh, a question, uh, Councillor Murdoch, please. All right. I'll, again, <laughs> um, uh, similar question to last time. You're asking yeah. for an increase. I just want you uh, some best understanding of why we increased this. Just. For your information, a couple of years ago, from twenty thousand to twenty-five thousand. Yes. Uh, and uh, so now we're looking at uh, oh, sorry, twenty-five thousand to thirty thousand. Now we're looking to thirty-five thousand. Yeah. So uh, that's a pretty significant increase over a few years. Yeah. Um, and also, I had a question just on the on in your budget. Uh, this, this has been there for a few years, and I think mm -hmm. I've asked it before. Sure. Um, there's a fifteen thousand dollar line item for computers. Uh, and yes. there is, a, if you go through the, the, the assets, the total value of the computers is around 11,000, of which there's still a fair bit of value left in them from amortization. So yes. I've never understood that number. 
And it seems like it just sort of hung around there for a long time just to be used for sure. whatever it gets needed. Sure, yeah, for. and I can definitely speak to that. Um, so just as you know, this is the provisional budget. There's actually something I'm working on with our treasurer to finalize it and bring it to the board this week for, for firming it up for the next year. Um, my predecessor has it, has had it as 15,000. Um, part of the expenditure is really that we actually run our own dedicated server downstairs in, in our space. So that requires us to have external contractors come out to support that. Um, we have, of course, just the usual maintenance. It's monthly, um, as well as we have stuff related to the internet. Um, all of that is wrapped up in there. I agree that's fairly high. Um, uh, during my short time here, so for the other uh, for the other counselors that I haven't had a chance to meet, um, part of my work this early on, six to seven months that I've been here, has really been assessing a lot of these expenditures. Um, they are a bit out of what I would have expected them to be, but as this is only my first few months and I haven't actually had a full year, I didn't want to make any substantial changes. But I am definitely noting that, particularly in that computer line, we can do better. Um, I have actually, since I've started, applied for our account for Google Apps for Nonprofits. That allows us to, for free, use internet, or sorry, use uh, email and not rely on having a dedicated server. Um, just this past week, in fact, our server power supply died and I didn't have access to anything for two days. My preference is not to have a dedicated server. I'm really strong in the ICT world, so I'm looking to move us away from that, and then that expenditure should change. Particularly, the Google Apps for Nonprofits will help us get there. Um, as well as I'm looking towards building up a new database. Our database is pretty archaic and it doesn't actually fit our needs. That's something I'm going to have to do a bit of a fundraising exercise for. It is separated from this. But I agree, when I look at what we've spent and even, like I said, this was our provisional budget as I've now been developing it more and more and speaking more to our treasurer, I'm seeing this number to be too high um, for our real needs. And I think we can for sure bring them down, particularly for a small organization. It's really that we have this dedicated server that we are having to maintain ourselves. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the second part of my question was just yes. the why the why the jump. The okay. Oh. Because I I because I am the new executive director, I am bringing a very different lens to our activities. Um, part of the work I've done over my last few months is that I've reorganized the organization, and so we have four staff members rather than three. The reason for that is that. We had one individual who was our services coordinator who not only uh, worked with our clients but also worked to coordinate our volunteers, which is a huge undertaking on its own. We have 500 clients and nearly 200 volunteers. To me, this was not sustainable, nor do I feel like we're actually uh, doing the best we can do for either audiences. I feel like we're really dropping the ball sometimes with our clients. We don't have the uh, opportunity to reassess their needs. We won't hear uh, about any challenges or something new unless one of our volunteers reports back to us. So that's really concerning for me on the quality of care for our clients. I think we really need to focus more. I've now hired um, an individual who's now our outreach and services coordinator. So part of this adjustment is I now have different needs for our, um, our HR. We have a separate ser volunteer coordinator. She is completely volunteer driven. All the engagement, all the retention, all the recruitment falls to her. We are seeing slow increases in both our volunteers and our clients just over the short period of time and I've done just this little bit of tweaking. I'm expecting to do way more strategy development in both of the worlds of our volunteers as well as our clients. So that's one piece. Beyond that, <laughs> I have a lot on my plate right now, but the HR piece is quite huge. I'm also in the process of developing um, programs to work within community with other organizations. Baptist Housing and I are working on uh, a program together um, that I call the Hop Aboard Bus Program, where we're gonna take seniors and bring them all to one place where they can be active and move about the community, do some shopping to get what they need to continue to live independently and on their own, but also create a sense of community for them. So because I want to start moving to enhance our one-to-one -one services with programming, I'm looking to bring our budget up somewhat. And so there's multiple levels to what I need. And of course, because we are a nonprofit organization, diversification of our funding is super important. And I realize for me, I, I'm always concerned about overtaxing any of our funders and any of our relationships. And so as this still is the first year for me, I really just need to have the opportunity to sort of stretch out to a, so I can bring us to a certain level. And then from there, I think we'll be able to even out and be more focused on our budget in certain areas. 
Thank you very much. Now, did I see another hand? Yes, go ahead, uh, Councilor Croft, please. Yeah, to you, Mayor. Um, my, my question was around your donations in 2015. There was 47,000, mm -hmm. 2016, 2016. 26, et cetera. Yeah. Um, do you have a plan? I hear you're planning other things. Do you have a plan to increase your donations? Yes. Yeah, so I have to say right now we are actually over budget. So if you look at the 17, 18, we had budgeted for 25,000. We're about at, I believe, 27, and we haven't accounted for February and March right now. The community is very, very generous, and we're very, very lucky for that. Um, for me, I, I want to continue to do more engagement in the community, which allows us to have people know us well and know us more and want to provide support for the activities that we're doing. For me, that's really us getting out into the community and being an active part, whether it's continuing to do the summer markets, be a part of the tea party. For the, for the, the tea party, I just imagine us being so much more engaged than a car that's kind of just you know, driving through the street. We are an organization that can support all ages. Now our focus, of course, is demographically as seniors at this point, but another part of my vision is that we move to engaging newcomers, young families, whatever is the need in the community. And I think part of my work will be identifying and doing an environmental scan of what are the needs that we are not addressing in the community, the seniors. I think we're doing a great job. And I think, like I said, because I've separated the roles, we're gonna do a way better job. But I think we're missing a lot of people in the community and who don't know us. And I think young families need to know what we can provide to them. And that's actually some work for me to do, to figure out what exactly we can do for those communities. And part of that will lead to more donations and support for us is my hope. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the one question, quick question. Um, last year you got 30, as we was pointed out, and this year you're asking for 35,000. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounded to me like you're, refined, you're in the process of refining the budget. Will that be refined in time for our estimates? Will there be an updated budget by yes, that absolutely. time? Yes, absolutely. So maybe, uh, maybe what, sorry. what we can do, <laughs> if that's the case, is we can ask you to submit the updated budget sure. and allow us to make a, a decision as to whether to move from 30,000 to 35,000 this year, okay? Yeah, and you when can forward that to staff. Okay, and when will that be that next? Um, I think we're considering, uh, probably about May 12th is when we consider grants, so That's it should be sometime before, okay. is that, do I have the right date? Yeah, the, bo the board will be meeting on, the, on Thursday, so Kay. we'll be able to provide that. Thank you. Your April. worship, it'll be through the estimates that start in April. So April. 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 And what's okay. the, but typically it's the last one that we. Um, That's correct. So that there's, I believe it's April 12th. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. thank you very no much. No problem. Thanks it, for, we can get that to you. Thanks thank you. for coming tonight. Can we move to estimates. Second. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. 35,000 is being moved to estimates for consideration. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. We have the Maritime Museum. Last year we approved $1,000. Uh, this year, its uh, request is for 2000 Is there anyone here from the Maritime Museum? All right. So uh, let's see if there's any questions that, uh, uh, that uh, members of council have, and we can capture them and send them to the Maritime Museum so we have them answered before we make decisions. Are there any, any questions that you'd like to have responses to? Mm, okay, I see none. Then... Move to refer to the 2002 estimates. Okay. Second. So it's the full 2000 request to estimates. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. The motion passes. Uh, need to suicide prevention, education, and support. That's uh, always been a, a, a very uh, emotional and uh, controversial issue. Last year, we did not give any money. Uh, and I think we had, prior to that, we had in the past slowly um, uh, reduced the amount to, uh, to, to zero, and this year we're back to a request for $1,000. Uh, and uh, if you can just identify yourself on behalf of the organization. Yes, my name's Jane Arnott. I'm uh, here on behalf of Okay, YouTube. welcome. Let's see if there's any questions for you first. I see no questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now... Is that it? That's, that's all. That's either, uh, unless, hang on, is, is there a question? Okay, uh, turn on your microphone also so yeah. everyone can hear you. Um, Councillor Kirby, thank please. Thank you, uh, and welcome. I, uh, I did have one question. I noticed that um, you have received funding from the Ministry of Children and Family Development um, this year, and when I, I was under the impression that you didn't receive money from them in previous years, but is, is that, uh, an improved situation or 
Are you receiving more funding from the ministry? Um, the history there is that up until 2010, when need downsized, we received about uh, $40,000 from, from the ministry. When we downsized, um, they decided, I don't know quite what they decided, but they cut our funding totally. Um, we lobbied and got 20000 back of that, which has been an annual amount. Um, it's, in those 10 years, gone up to about 21000 um, But the program itself, it's specifically for the work we do in the schools, and the program itself cost us about 88000 um, And we have uh, um, had discussions with them over the years, and um, they're basically um, in a tight financial position all the time. And when they went to sort of a more centralized contracting basis, they're just uh, repeating that they're not in a position to consider the, the request. Thank you. Any follow-up question or anything? No? Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Arnott. Okay. And what is Council's desire to deal with this? I would move to estimates. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded to estimates. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you. I should. The Oak Bay Heritage Foundation is next. Last year they got 3,000. This year is 4,000. Is there a representative from the um, foundation? All right. Now, is there any questions that uh, council wish uh, to be uh, written and presented to the foundation? Yes, go ahead, please. I'm just going to point out, I, I did have a chance to speak with uh, Robert today, so I can answer some basic questions. If you can just tell us who Robert is. Uh, uh, sorry, the chair of the Heritage Foundation. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So go ahead, please, uh, Councillor um, Murdoch. I will put on Councillor Murdoch's hat and say, gosh, you asked for $3,000 last year, and they have an increase of 33% for this year, so could you please explain what that money would be for? Thank you. <laughs> oh, how the tables have turned. You're so <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, in a nutshell, um, uh, the, the amount of money that used to be given was $5,000. The, because the, the foundation is responsible for handing out grants for heritage designated houses, um, which can be up to $10,000 per house, um, they hadn't handed out many grants, so that the, the amount of money in the reserves was, had grown, um, and so that number was reduced. Uh, this year, there's no immediate need for it, but with five additional houses coming onto the uh, register or de being designated, uh, there's a there's a reasonable chance of expectation that some of those those grants could be used. So this is that extra thousand dollars just to put a little bit more money into those reserves. Uh, it's not needed this year, but it's just to kind of make sure that the reserves are in place. So um, that was that's um, that's my reflection of of, of what I was told. Okay, I would thank be happy. Oh. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Zelko. Thank you so much, uh, through you, Chair. Um, uh, do I uh, surmise uh, that this uh, grant money that's being made available is essentially a carrot to encourage all of our residents to, to uh, uh, um, designate their houses heritage? Is this, is this part of the uh, enticement that uh, the Foundation is trying to do, please? You make it sound like a trap. I, I don't, uh <laughs> uh, yeah. I one of the benefits of having a designated designating one's home as a heritage home is that you have access to these grants for for uh, for restoration work and so forth on the house. So, it's not a um, it's not a huge amount of money, but it certainly you know, helps uh, provide for funding for say replacing roofs and so forth within the heritage context. Thank I you very much. I'd be happy to move this to estimates. The four thousand. Thank you. Move and second a discussion. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Uh, the Vancouver Island South Film and Media Commission. Last year they received 10000 and this year they're requesting 10000 Kathleen um, Gilbert, Film Commissioner for Vancouver Island South Film welcome. and Media Commission. Good to see you again. We brought Murdoch Mysteries here this year. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Are, are there uh, any questions about why they're staying at the same level? I'd be happy to move this to estimates, the 10000 Thank you very much. Moved and seconded. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Oak Bay Music Society, last year 500, and this year the request is for 500. Is there a representative here? No. Okay. 
I would move to estimates. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Is there any questions for them, by the way? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Comment? Go yeah. ahead. I just, uh, ba based on the, um, the ask here, I, I don't know if they are aware that I'm pretty sure they would be eligible funding for funding through the CRD Arts Commission because we've got some new um, granting opportunities. So that may be brought to their attention. Um, and actually, the cultural coordinator at the Parks and Rec would be the communicator of that, if it was, a, if we could communicate Thank that you. to them. And we do, uh, do you remember, what's the amount that we contribute to the, um, we know it's a lot. Yeah, 60, close to 60, just under that. Okay, so th they really should be encouraged to take these kind of requests directly to the place that's being funded significantly by Oak Bay and other uh, communities. Thank you. Um, there's a motion, has it been called? It's been called. Bike to Work uh, Week Society, is there any representative here? Okay. Move to estimates. Second. The, uh, in the, have we in the past, does anyone remember, actually approved it at this stage just because of the timing of when Bike to Work Week is? Is it usually in the, uh, in, in April, May, or does it move around? I, th I think it's always the same week. Okay. Right? All right. All right, discussion, all in favor? Opposed, none opposed. The next item is the city of Victoria. Last year got 5,000, and this year are asking for 1,500. Uh, is there anyone representative from the city of Victoria? I'd like to move to estimates, the 1,500. Okay. Moved and seconded, discussion. All in favor? Opposed, none opposed, thank you very much. The green teams of Canada, zero last year. This is the first time I think we've ever had a request from that mm -hmm. I can remember. And this year they want $5,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for having me. My name's Amanda and I run the Greater Victoria Green Team Program. We have been working in Oak Bay since August 2014, but this is the first time we have approached the, your municipality for funding. We have approached a number of other municipalities asking for the same amount. Um, to cover half the cost of running between the average is four to six activities in their municipality. So you're next. Okay. <laughs> and, and what's been the result of going to other municipalities? Um, it's been uh, quite successful. We're waiting on one more. Uh, we haven't, uh, we, we have one full-time staff myself, so it's taking a little bit of time to approach um, each municipality, but so far we have View Royal, Esquimalt, uh, North Saanich, Colwood, um, Central Saanich didn't apply for th them this year, and I've been talking to Souk as well. Mm -hmm. And how much of all of those given, if anything? Um, so uh, different amounts. Um, North Saanich signed up for six activities, so that's $6,000. Uh, we're fundraising for the remaining cost of each of those activities, so matching 50%. Um, View Royal signed up for six activities as well. Um, Colwood was six as well, and then Esquimalt, uh, three activities this year. And Central Saanich was one, when th but we didn't apply this year. Mm -hmm. but, sir, can you explain the difference between a grant and signing up? Um, so we're approaching, we're going through the grant process this year with Oak Bay, but we have been talking to other municipalities to uh, create a fee-for-service partnership. So we're kind of testing out different models. Um, we have the type of service that we're offering. It is an ongoing volunteer engagement service that really benefits community groups. Um, and so a lot of municipalities, some of them have said, you know, this is, this is under our operational funds, whereas other ones say this is more of a grant. So between the Greater Victoria Green Team and the Lower Mainland Green Team, um, under the fee-for-service partnership, we have seven municipalities, but since I haven't met any of you, so yet, so I wanted to apply for more grant funding through Oak Bay as a first step in um, our relationship, although we have been here since August 2014. Okay. And your does list that make sense? Well, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in your list of, act of the 
communities. Yeah. I didn't hear Victoria or Saanich. Maybe I missed them. Um, we, ha we are in, in the uh, discussion with Saanich. Uh, Victoria has, uh, we have been talking with them for a little while. They have um, some uh, conflicts with union things, and so not just our group, but other volunteer groups. And so I've been working with them to resolve some of those um, issues because we'd have a lot of volunteers who are Victorian residents, and so they'd like to see more opportunities for the green team to help in their parks. But right now we're just still in discussion okay. with them to resolve some of those. And yeah. Other than you wanting to test different models, is yeah. there any barrier to you working with our staff for a fee for service? We would love to see that. Um, I would. That that is definitely something that would we do prefer. Um, but we haven't. This was an approach I just decided to take with with you. But I like to talk to if that if you think that is a better um, option for us, then I'm open to that. Mm -hmm. That would be up to council, but uh, okay. that's certainly one option. Yeah. Uh, if if there is a grant, will it all be spent in Oak Bay? Exa yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what so kind of things? Can you give us uh, some kind of idea? Yeah. Please? So we have um, a lot of our the success of our program is a lot to do with time. So although we have one full time staff, our our goal is to run at full budget this year, which would be a part time staff. Um, Eighty percent of our budget is HR, and that's why we've been able to have a really strong volunteer turnout. We are the largest volunteer group in all of the CRD, um, and so 80% is HR, which includes um, recruitment, outreach, um, volunteer engagement, training, um, and then the 20% includes volunteer insurance, refreshments, and um, administration, um, and it's in one of my slides that I had, the okay. last slide. Thank you. Yeah, and so we do really focus on um, creating a, a really good experience for volunteers, and that's what we've shown to have a lot of retur returning volunteers. That builds capacity for existing projects. Okay. And I think we do have your slides here yeah. uh, in our package. Okay, is there any other questions people have? Yes, go ahead, please, Councillor Murdo. Uh, Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, the funding request, it's mm -hmm. reading through your application here, you're asking for the total need for Oak Bay is $10,000 for, 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 yeah. for us to pay for five of the total 10,000 yeah. required. Uh, but under revenues, you don't list us. You list I know, the Gosling Foundation and the Island Savings. It's, so I know, I'm just curious, is that? Yeah, it was my mistake. I am, yeah. It's okay, I'm okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. A mistake yeah. is totally allowable. I just yeah. wanted to make and sure we, I understood the ask. Yeah. We um, apply for funding, um, like we are focused on municipal funding right now because we that's our immediate, um, where we're making our impact. And so we did apply for island savings. Uh, we do have a funder who's really interested in us exploring more of the fee-for-service partnerships and they are gonna be contributing matching funds um, that way. So we do have a funder who would be giving us 50% of the funds from municipal municipalities, yeah. So that's a different. So I guess I'm. That's a different discussion. Um, if you're interested in having that at a different meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Not tonight. Thank you. Or tonight. I don't know. No, so it's fine. And certainly, we have a lot of people who are interested in helping fund these sorts of activities. Yeah. Um, I guess the only other broad question I would have here is that you have been work doing great work mm -hmm. in in Thank Oak Bay you. for years, um, but always managing to cover those costs. And, and yeah. so it's, it's odd for us to have people doing a bunch of things and walking along yeah. and then suddenly showing up and saying, but we need 5,000 and we can't do anything this year. Yeah. So can you maybe just really quickly explain why that Delta? So we, um, my, the founder of the Green Teams of Canada Charity, she applied for funding to start the Greater Victoria Green Team four years ago and Eco Action Environment Canada uh, funded our program for three years um, and covered a good portion of our costs. And so the end of three years was uh, March of 2017. And since then we've been exploring ways of uh, creating sustainability. And a lot of grants after a year or two expect you to have a sustainable approach. Um, and so this, this could be a way moving forward if we didn't rely solely on large um, foundation grants and other grants to diversify our funding um, more locally with continuing to apply for large 
larger grant, like from Victoria Foundation, for instance. Okay, yeah. go ahead, if please. That makes, yeah. Yeah, so please. one last thing is really not for you so much, but when we consider this for estimates, perhaps could we get a ref uh, some information back from staff? What we have right now through Friends of Uplands Park is mm -hmm. that we track all the volunteer hours. Yeah. We use those to get federal grants back mm -hmm. to help cover. Okay. Um, I'm just curious if, if we can do the similar thing with the green team as we do with that, or if this, because it's a regional mm -hmm. entity, if we, if we don't qualify for those. So I'd be mm -hmm. curious to know, because um, that certainly makes it very easy to justify. Mm -hmm. Like for them, a couple thousand dollars, they get probably $30,000 in grants back. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty s easy calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'd be good to know that for, for the estimates process. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm prepared to move this to estimate. No, I, I had another question. Sorry. Uh, um, Council Braithwaite, please. Uh, thank you. So I know that you, um, you uh, Councilor Murdoch touched on a lot of the questions that I had, but um, you have uh, three grants that you've applied for. And what happens if you get all three of those? Then um, you're going to have an excess of money. And so where does that how does that change things? More activities um, in those municipalities that have supported us. Okay, so we so would we would we would add um, the amount of activities on, um, but usually with um, organizations you apply for more. Unfortunately, we have never received our full funding. Mm -hmm. So if we do receive our full funding, then right. yeah. So uh, and and just a fun. just a comment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at your budget and I think about Friends of Uplands Park and mm -hmm. what they do. I mean, they are yeah. a very large organization yeah. as far as volunteer hours mm -hmm. and they work within a very limited budget yeah and they've only come and asked us for twenty five hundred dollars oh, sure. and so I look at what you do mm -hmm. and I know Margaret will probably want to have a yeah. comment but I just w I needed to say that <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, and I know that you work with them mm -hmm. um, but um, it just it's that's something that I take into consideration for as well sure. when I look at that is how much they're coming and asking for and mm -hmm. how much you're asking for and I realize that the two activities are a little bit different mm -hmm. um, but I look at the, the volunteer hours and the other Definitely. things as well so yeah so um, I think not just with Uplands Park but stewardship in general um, a lot of volunteers have been working for free recruiting their neighbors and um, one of the reasons that Green Teams of Canada started in Vancouver was that a lot of the stewardship groups that my boss helped out did the same thing time and time again um, there's where's the young people why is there only three people here you know what where are new volunteers and so over the years that she started the green teams of canada i'm um, putting time into recruitment coordination outreach um, it really has proven to be successful so although our dollar value seems to be a little higher than some of the stewardship groups it is the reason we have been we have grown to become such a fierce and amazing powerful volunteer group and so we really hope to add value to stewardship because I, I find that it's undervalued for the amount of amazing work that we do and groups like Uplands Park and other groups. But I do hear the same thing. You know, we're, we want, we want, where's the, rep like when, when I, am, when they're no longer to work, like we're, we need more volunteers into those places. So I hear the same thing, not just here, but all over the CRD. So <laughs> green teams could be a solution out of a lot of, you know, options out there. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Now, it sounds like we're going to get something back. At, uh, I'm wondering, too, if uh, as part of that, we can just find out if there's any, I don't know, barriers or showstoppers for the fee uh, for service approach in the event that council wishes to go down that route and suggest that you, uh, you, you work, <laughs> excuse me, with our park staff okay. and, and other members of our community on a fee for service basis. So. It, who knows if they're showstoppers or in any of those? It'd be nice to know. Okay. okay. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, we have a, do we have a motion? Move to estimate. Move Second. Second. Discussion. Yes. Go ahead, please. And just before we Council move on Kerber. to other things, I just wanted to mention that the before and after photos are rather dramatic of uh, the impact that uh, this group would have on on all of our parks, and uh, how they can bolster the work of F Friends of Uplands Park and other areas of the of the w of the. Uh, community and I also want to remark that they also do a social benefit there's an incredible social benefit in that they are reaching out to communities that aren't necessarily 
um, and might not be inclined or might not know Margaret, who, which is impossible to not know Margaret, but <laughs> <laughs> but it, that there's uh, there's you know youth at risk, there's uh, newcomers to Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that uh, should be also reflected in our support for such a an, uh, this mm -hmm. this kind of an organization. Their their goal is the same as the Friends of Uplands Park, but at the same time they have a much wider audience and a and a different. Um, bottom line uh, uh, that includes a, a social benefit. So thank mm -hmm. you for the work you do. Thank you so much. And Eric, succession. <laughs> <laughs> There's a succession. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, so we're going to get back on the agenda now. Um, we're in number 17, please, and that's the BC Accordion and Tango Your Society. Worship, we need to call the question on the previous Oh, question. we didn't. Oh, I thought we had. My apologies. So we go, we go back to the, uh, the green teams, and there is a motion on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Uh, now we go to the uh, BC Accordion and Tango Society. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you just come forward and introduce yourself. Uh. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alexander Milovic. I'm here on behalf of the BC Accordion and Tango Society. Okay. And uh, as you see in our application, we are organizing a World Accordion and Tango Festival this year. And um, quite a big chunk of the events uh, will be held in Obey at UBIC and uh, Dave Donald Community Theater. So we found it logical to approach you. And I did have a chance to speak with Mayor Jensen, uh, almost maybe two months ago, or a little bit less than that, and we discussed the options, how could uh, Obey uh, municipality be involved, and he kindly suggested that this is basically the best way to apply through grants, and uh, what we applied for is uh, basically just to cover a portion of the costs of the venues that we will be renting in Oak Bay. And uh, this amount that we asked for is about 1.5% of our total budget. So this is basically to test your goodwill towards our event. We will bring uh, the world, uh, the accordion and tango world to Oak Bay this fall in November. And uh, we would really appreciate this help from you. Um, I'm sure we could somehow survive without this, <laughs> uh, but it would it would mean a lot if we could just, you know, check off uh, these costs through this, and basically this whole amount goes back to Oak Bay, to the UVIC and to Dave Dunnett Community Theater. Uh, that's okay. basically. Thank you. Uh, and this is the first year that we've received this request, and uh, this is for thirty-five hundred. I have a question about uh, how many times you're going to be using the Dave Dunnett Theatre during the uh, uh, the festivities. Uh, the Dave Dunnett Theatre will be used three times, and uh, the UVIC will be used what five days, okay. five days nine to nine to ten <laughs> night throughout the whole day, okay. and about fifty hours. Uh, will be free events. So those hours that we will be uh, using mostly Ubik School of Music and um, two days at Dave Dunnett Theatre are being used for the World Accordion uh, Championships where the best accordionists from all over the world come to compete in different categories in classical and jazz and variety. So, and those, those competition parts are open to public free of charge so anyone and, and what is uh, the cost of a rental in Dave Dunnett Theatre for, a, 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 I assume you're non-profit, right? Non-profit society? Yes. Uh, what we have for now is just a quote because only today I found out that that whole process has to go through the school district rental mm -hmm. office mm -hmm. and they have to compare the quotes that we received with their new fee policies which is coming I don't know when. Uh, so uh, basically the quote that we got last year were um, the 500 just for the venue plus all the hours for technicians and different fees and believe it or not there is application fee which I've never seen in my life before for rental <laughs> booking application but um, that's for 
they've done community theater. So it will come at about 2,500 total, between 2,000 and 2,500. And, uh, per night, um, per, per use? Uh, no, no, that's total, what we, all, all together. Oh. All together. All together for, for these three days. And uh, the rest is the UVIC. And uh, there we have a decent <laughs> chunk of money. So, as I said, this is just a portion of what we are covering. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Braithwaite, please. Uh, I mean, that bears the question because we have a certain number of free uses mm -hmm. per year. Um, could we not give them one free use out of our collection of free uses? Um, they would still have to pay the um, the charges for the um, technicians, etc. But for the actual rental of the theater, that could be that could be something that perhaps we could consider. It's certainly uh, considerable. Um, uh, the The only issue is there is a contract with the school board, which I think has a very specific um, clause in it about passing it on. However, uh, one of the things we have done with other with other charitable groups is to actually co-sponsor it, which then it really becomes our event and we can use one of the, I think we have 12 uh, per year, I think about one per month that we're allowed to use free. And when we co-sponsor it, then, um, then it qualifies for that, at least it has in the past. So that might be a way to, to do it. And we, st we, we have quite a bit it. of time to think about it. Yeah. Uh, and certainly the, the something that the commission um, the Parks, Recreation and Culture Commission could take up uh, in the meantime. Councillor Croft, please. Uh, through you, Mayor. I, I, I also think there's an opportunity here for an application to Obey Tourism. Mm -hmm. Tourism does have some uh, funding for events that are taking place, and so you might look at their application form uh, and contact them. Okay. Um, I think this is the kind of thing that we would like to see and be able to promote in our community and <coughs> sort of see, saw that Tourism Victoria is already involved, so we yeah, work with them, yeah. but it's an opportunity uh, as, as another funding source. So th <laughs> those are, you know, we, we don't make decisions till the 12th of April, so um, it would be nice to know the results of whether or not you can uh, so we can co-sponsor if that works for you and your society and it works for the school board. That's one way. The other way is uh, contacting the Oak Bay Tourism through uh, Councillor Croft. And that might be a way to we actually support you uh, without providing grant monies, providing almost in kind for the school. Which and would be then great. Uh, yeah. Oak Bay Tourism separately. Okay, Councillor Nay, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, just one thing. Um, it, a great project too, by the way. Yeah. Um, the money you've listed as other sources of uh, potential income, one is the CRD. Is, yes. that, is that the CRD Arts Commission uh, or something No, else? Th this is uh, through their annual grants that they have, uh, project the grants, project grants, so they come through CRD Arts Department, right. so okay. I don't know how you And has that been it. granted now? Uh, no, it it's in May. Okay, So their Thank deadline you. is in May. Yeah, okay. For that. Thank you. I think we're ready for a motion. Um, move to estimates. Second. Okay, move to estimates. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. So hopefully by the 12th you will have sorted these other issues out. Okay, I will And, and then uh, sure. we'll be able to uh, make a, a final d decision on that day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. All the best. Is it okay if I leave now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any accordion music to add to play as you leave, okay. but... Uh, Thank you for your time. Maybe next time. Uh, we move uh, to the... Uh, to the last in this group, but I need to say something about it. It's not quite the same as all the others. Uh, it comes under 18, which is request for financial assistance, and certainly in the little overview that we have, explanatory note, it's listed as a grant. But it's very important to know it's just a flow-through grant. So with the Business Improvement uh, Association, they actually collect extra tax dollars, if you will, from the, from the members, from the, the, not the members, the people in the uh, area. And then they take those extra tax dollars, give it to us, we give it back to them, and we have uh, some uh, consultation involved in, in the budget. So that's all it is tonight. It's not to whether or not we're gonna grant it, because uh, in essence, it's a flow through money from the, from the owners to back to the, uh, the Business Improvement Association. So I see we have the, uh, the president, co-chair of the uh, commission, Martin Cowden, and Heather Leary is here, who's uh, one of the 
people that help the uh, BIA. So uh, let's just see, uh, is there some questions people have? If so, I'd, yes, go, yeah, okay, I'm gonna ask you both to come forward. I'm not sure who's gonna, uh, I, I understand Mr. Cowden has agreed to take the easy questions <laughs> and Ms. Leary has agreed to take the difficult ones. <laughs> so yes, uh, <coughs> that's called delegating. <laughs> Okay, An Councillor uh, Kirby, do you have a question, please? An experience. Um, I, I did have one question. I just noticed that there's um, the same events as usual, except for there seems to be a new addition of uh, the Oak Bay Village Spring Nosh. And I'm wondering if we're allowed to hear um, a preview of what that might be. It happened last year. It did. For I missed it. Okay, let's nosh. hear more about it. So we, we did that event as a pilot last year. It was held in the parking lot in front of Chef on the Run, Oak Bay Seafood. It was meant to bring some vibrancy to the upper end of the avenue because, as you know, due to the geography, the bulk of the events happen down at this end of the avenue. And also to celebrate all of the food places that have become part of the BIA. Oak Bay Seafood was brand new to us then. We have the whole beast. We have Otavio. We have Chef on the Run. We have restaurants. We have pubs. So it was to celebrate local food culture in Oak Bay. So it doesn't require a road closure or any of those things. But And for the first time that I had been involved with the BIA, we had a very small beer garden, 50 people. So which was very popular, and I got many requests to have it every weekend, which we don't plan on doing, but it certainly <laughs> was a nice addition. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, thank you very much and for I that. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed it last year. I, I was not, uh, it was not on my radar, but now so it is, so. We you. came together uh, and really did the event in the month, so this year uh, further planning, so more ability to promote and have further involvement from our membership and the community. So, and I do, I do notice, uh, just looking at my calendar, it's also Mother's Day. So Yeah, it's, it's actually the day before. The dates are slightly wrong. I realized sitting there listening Ooh. to people talking that the dates will follow our previous, so second Wednesday for the market, the Saturday of Mother's Day weekend for that event, the last so Sunday in November for Light Up. So we haven't, we haven't changed our okay. scheduling. It's so it's not the 13th right of May, it's the Saturday of that yes, week. Correct. Okay, so it can be a prelude to Mother's Day. Uh, so, are there any other questions on the budget? Because that's what we're looking at now. Okay. Yeah. I would okay. move to move, move approval. Move, move approval. approval. Yeah. Okay. May I say something? Absolutely. <laughs> I would come, just like to come take all the way to the front, so you might as well have something to say. <laughs> I would like to just thank council, and the admin staff, and the public works for an enormous amount of support that we get. It isn't just the businesses of Oak Bay Village that put this on. It's in cooperation uh, with the rest of the community, and it's a fantastic community event. And we take it for granted. You, one might have a different perspective if they were part of a BIA in another municipality, uh, as I have been. So the work that you do is terrific and I just want to thank you for it. And I thank you for also clarifying that the business community isn't coming and asking for a grant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very important. Thank it's a you pleasure. Very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cowden. And, and let me return the, uh, the compliment uh, because uh, uh, our community has benefited immensely from the vibrancy that BIA has added to life in the village, whether it be a market night or the light up or, or the nosh now. Yes. Uh, and it really is, is uh, it's given a new dimension and uh, you know, brings great joy. So, so thank you very much. I know uh, Ms. Leary has been organizing this for many years and we thank her and, and the BIA executive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Job well done, thank you. <laughs> And we're going to have to change that day to a Saturday now, okay? Thanks a lot. Uh, we move on to number 19. We haven't we taken a question. Call the question. Oh, we haven't called that question either? I'm just in such a great hurry tonight. $80,000, uh, approval of their budget, uh, discussion, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. And that motion does pass, and our thanks again. Um, we have number 19, which is a consulting services information technology um, and uh, how to, uh, uh, that we, uh, we keep modern and, and ensure that there's uh, always ongoing service and uh, there is a recommendation here to award the IT consulting services contract to C to Sky Consulting. There is a strategic impact here, you may 
may see in the report which says uh, that this initiative is intended to achieve the strategic directive which to focus on being well managed and well governed to serve our residents and so goes on to say approving this change in how services are managed is intended to ensure the infrastructure and services are well placed to serve the district going forward. So thank you very much for staff for putting that together. Let's see if there's any questions uh, uh, on the report which recommends uh, approval of the contract. Okay, go ahead, Councilor Murdoch, please. Uh, I'll keep it simple. I, I think I got most of my questions answered earlier today, but just at a high level, um, usually we have a sort of a, an analysis of the various responses and so forth. Was this not done because it was more open-ended? Uh, sort of RFP request, or is it, uh, and maybe you can give us some sense of how this is being uh, done. Is it an annual contract? Sounds like it's being renewed annually. Ms. Costin, you wrote the report. Did you want to answer that? Uh, thank you. Through you, Chair. Thank you. Um, yes, it was an open ended uh, RFP, and we had two components <coughs> to it. One was the technical, and the other one was the um, cost structure, the fee structure. And Sea to Sky came, um, was the proponent that had the best overall fee structure that uh, that was best for the district. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Uh, Carter, do you wish to add anything to that? Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, we had nine proposals received and they were all very different, so it took a lot of time and effort to go through and uh, evaluate equivalently and um, so we had a, a staff team that actually went through and evaluated the documents. Um, we did that individually and then met as a team and uh, came to a unanimous decision on that. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I just want to clear on the, on, the, on the budget impact. We, we approved money last budget for an IT manager and this, is, this money's coming out of that pool. So is there any impact outside of the, the pre-approved dollar amounts for, for that contract? Through your worship, no, um, it is, it would be using the IT funds that were um, authorized in last year's budget, uh, so it would just be going forward into 2018, and in fact, um, we were able to uh, receive some savings as well, because although we're paying a monthly fee, um, they provide some software that we had to purchase individually previously, so we, we did find some savings there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, entertain a motion, please. Move the recommendation. Move Second. The recommendation that is to award the contract to Sea to Sky uh, Consulting. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. That's carried. Thank you. We next have uh, 20, uh, uh, which is the building and planning uh, month report of active land use applications. Uh, and the recommendation is that we re receive those. Move received. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Questions? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Croft, please. Uh, through you, Chair. Um, it, is this an owner's report to prepare? Because it seems to be somewhat similar each month. Is, is there a way that we could you know, just add the things to it as opposed to reporting on everything each time? I, I'm just trying to make your job maybe a little easier because it seems kind of odd that we you know, see 650 applications each month, and I'm sure none of us are tracking the individual ones. Uh, it's an appreciative report to see the amount of work that you're doing. Um, thank you. Ms. Jensen. The reporting out on the, on the monthly land use stat, stats was intended to give council an idea of the, the operations that are in front of staff at the moment. Um, we could certainly break it out so you could see the, the new applications that were re be re being received monthly as well. Uh, this is all tracked through our, our operations so we can easily uh, manipulate the report. And I guess the one question is, I know we used to, for instance, in the financial, we used to get fin financials monthly, but it was felt the quarterly was enough, so that, that's another option if we, uh, to reduce the workload. Because there often, there isn't a lot of questions on, the, on these when they're presented to us, so um, in any event, uh, we have a motion to receive, okay? Any no other comments or questions? Uh, uh, all in favor? Opposed, not opposed. Is there any sense that, it, what would it look like if we presented it quarterly? I guess it looked like the same, just a little bit longer. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, is there a desire amongst council to continue to have it monthly as opposed to quarterly? 
Yes, Councillor Kirby, please. I and think it, it does May. bring value in that we cool. know um, and there are reminded of, of the amount of work that's going on in the building and planning department. Um, I don't think this is a, this is a monthly report. Oh, I, it seems like it's yeah, been a long time since we yeah. saw one, so. Just last month. <laughs> but it was just last <laughs> month. Um, okay, and uh, so I, I would be amenable to having it quarterly because I think it does bring a, but, you know, because it does remind us and, and, yeah. and keep top of mind that there are how many applications are ongoing uh, and, uh, and where things are at, but at the same time, maybe not every month. Yeah. Okay, so did you want to make a motion? I would move that we um, ask staff to bring uh, the report quarterly. Okay. Second. Move and second. Councillor Nee, you had a point? Well, I guess um, for me, the issue is, the issue is more, um, as uh, staff just uh, comment on, is seeing what the new applications are. For me, that, that would give me a sense of the, of the load that is coming in on a monthly. I mean, if we go quarterly, that's fine. But just... It, it's um, it, what what we've got are the old applications and the new ones coming in all meshed together. So if there was any way for me, that would be more helpful to understand the workload on Let's a monthly see, basis. Is that possible to do that kind of segregate the the new from the old in a simple way that we can look through them quickly and see it? So just to can firm what I think I heard we could bring forward a monthly report that's the new applications for the month and then quarterly everything no. or quarterly I old and new I heard quarterly with segregated new in that last quarter yeah we could do that for you okay is that good okay Councillor Zelka and then Councillor Braithwood please thank you chair um uh, so in the absence of uh, this being available in an electronic format, uh, such as um, a Tempest, uh, I notice other municipalities have a direct link from the web page right into Tempest, and I know we have the same Tempest software, so at some point um, uh, we may offload all of this work from staff just simply onto the website, uh, but that might involve some money, so we'll have Kay. to get there. Thank well, you. maybe Sea to Sky can consult and uh, let us know how that can be done. Councillor Braithwaite, please. Just to clarify, th that's a list of everything that's currently active, correct? So it's sure. not like anything really falls off until it's not active anymore, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, ready for the question? All in favor? Opposed? No one opposed. Thank you very much and thanks for that and uh, hopefully it'll take a small load off. Uh, the 21, which is the Oak Bay Advisory Design Panel minutes and we have October, November, December and January minutes. Okay. Move receipt. Second. Move and Second, a discussion. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Murdoch. I guess I would just m observe that these are all really long meetings, all sort of three hour plus meetings, mm -hmm. and perhaps there may be some effort made to, to find some mechanism <laughs> for staff and for the members to find some way of shortening. I don't know if there's any way of doing that, but just throwing that out there, it seems like an enormous amount of time and energy being spent by a lot of people uh, on these sorts of uh, applications. And okay. I'm, I'm, it it's doesn't affect my ability to receive these, obviously, but I'm just going to throw that out there. All right. So we have a motion on the floor to receive. Uh, discussion, all in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you. We now have the Advisory Planning Commission minutes. That's just for one month, February 6th. Move proceed. Second. Second move. And go ahead, please. Questions or comments? Go ahead. Uh, regarding the motion, uh, Chair, um, I noticed that in item 6, of the uh, Advisory Planning Commission uh, minutes under new business uh, towards the end, it has moved a motion that uh, uh, asks for a review of the parking bylaw um, and then passing comment within the uh, motion about, uh, um, about uh, a characterization of the bylaw. And basically they suggest that the bylaw needs to be changed. Um, so I, we would like to ask uh, through you, maybe to staff or maybe to, to, to our legislative um, uh, person uh, upon our point of order, um, since this motion is um, uh, requests an action, do we need to th exclude this? Because uh, what I'm worried is that if we simply receive this, we are approving this and adding it to our priorities. Ms. Santorosa, can you help us on that? Receipt of the minutes does not imply approval of any recommendations made within the minutes, so if council wishes to consider the recommendation made by the EPC, they should bring forward a separate motion to that effect. 
Right. So if I may clarify, so if we simply receive these minutes, we are not beholding ourselves or the next, next council to any action with respect to what this is saying. This is just a comment that the APC is doing unto themselves and it goes nowhere. If that's the case, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Seeing no other hands except one. Councillor Kirby on that one. It goes nowhere and only until we we were to bring it forward as a motion to council to act add it to our strategic priority mm -hmm. session. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it can always be done. Okay. Okay, ready. Do you want to comment yeah. on that, Councillor Sulkin? Uh, comment on the comment. I just want to say that if uh, there is a desire to change the parking bylaw, it would initiate from this body. It mm -hmm. would not be a side initiation through minutes. It would be a separate initiation yep. that has nothing to do with what's written on this uh, this minute. That's correct. And I just I want to clarify that that is the case, and it's not what I just heard, uh, Councillor. No, uh, I think what I heard Kirby from Councillor Kirby was that it would, it would could form part of a strategic priorities review by this council, not by the uh, underlying advisory body. And I think that's the case with any advisory body. With respect to the motion that's on the table, having to do with these minutes, yes. not anything about a separate priority set setting session, which I think right. you guys are talking about. I'm talking about the motion on the table. Right. So with respect to that motion, I just want to confirm that this does not uh, uh, um, beholden us to add it to the priority setting sessions today. I think that was clear from Ms. Santa Rosa's uh, comments. So, okay. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. We have correspondence upcoming uh, later. That's 23. We appreciate your correspondence. Second. Second. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you. Correspondence uh, uh, with respect to uh, the development's variant permit application later on the agenda. Move your seat. Moved. Seconded. Uh, discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Uh, new business and verbal reports. Is there any new business? Okay. Let's see, I have a, a report of the Capital Regional District. Did you have new business? Sorry. I, I yes, have new business, but I have a verbal report to provide from. Yeah, uh, let's do that. that yeah, other verbal after? reports comes after a report of okay. CRD. I'll wait. Uh, very quickly on the CRD. Uh, just to let you know, on the, a couple of agenda items coming up Wednesday, and we've had some of them discussion, discussed here. The transportation service that we had uh, quite a discussion about at this stage, uh, that uh, appears uh, certainly from the staff recommendation of CRD, uh, they will recommend that it not proceed. Uh, and I think that's related mostly to Victoria's rejection of, of that as a service. Uh, so. Uh, if it goes beyond that, uh, then um, it would be in another form, I suspect. Uh, we had a budget update uh, recently, the finance report uh, with respect to the two budgets. And I can also tell you Kitchen Scraps is on the ag agenda on Wednesday, a recommendation that uh, the current hauling arrangements be extended. Uh, they were more expensive. Uh, and at some point we'll uh, perhaps ask our staff uh, what the implications will be for Oak Bay uh, given the increase in, um, in hauling costs. So that's my report and uh, all of it will be confirmed after Wednesday. Now other verbal reports please. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to pass along that um, I'm continuing to follow up on the issue of uh, the change in uh, service provision from uh, Beacon Services uh, who are no longer supporting the Crossing Guard program mm -hmm. um, and hoping to hear back from the school district. I followed up with them uh, recently and they're awaiting a report from Piet Langstrat, the superintendent, on um, alternate arrangements. I did try to pursue uh, another avenue which would be um, service provision through the CRD um, given that they supported the active mm -hmm. safe uh, routes to school program uh, for three years, um, which they are no longer doing, but that doesn't fall within their mandate, nor does it fall within the mandate of the Traffic Safety Commission, uh, because they only do uh, marketing and education programming. So uh, was trying to seek another alternative because this uh, is coming up to budget fairly soon, and I'd like to have uh, some kind of plan uh, in place before we reach our estimates uh, decision making in April and you know know that we're funding something that is uh, 
much depended upon in our community and expected as a service uh, for safe routes to school. So uh, the and th there's some anxiety, I think, on the part of those people that uh, that are employed by that mm -hmm. program. Um, I also uh, wanted to clarify that not all all of the employees of the uh, program are receiving uh, the same wage, and so there was a recent article in the Times Colonist that gave the impression that there was uh, they were receiving twenty dollars an hour, and and they are not, um, not all receiving that. So um, just if in case there was some misconception out there that there was a uh, that that was the w the wage, it's not the not the case in Oak Bay. Um, and so, yeah, if anybody has any suggestions or can um, offer any ideas, that would be very helpful. I just, um, I'm hoping to hear something from the school district fairly soon uh, as uh, to what they, they can offer to, to help support that program. But um, if not, it would end in July and, um, and I don't know how it would be provided. Kay. Thank you very much for continuing to monitor that and also for uh, uh, giving us the information. Council Crop, please. Yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, South Island Prosperity Open Innovation Challenge was held yesterday up at UVic, and there are out of 69 submissions, 10 finalists tried for three $15,000 prizes. Uh, the first prize went to uh, a UVic engineering student. Uh, he has invented a battery-powered bicycle technology that is a bicycle trailer that can adapt to any bicycle to provide electric drive assistance. And he did that because of the cost of electric bicycles, and this is a very innovative, inexpensive way to do this. Uh, the second winning project was a uh, fellow by the name of Matthew Kemshaw, uh, supporting harvesting abundance in the urban orchard. Uh, Kemshaw is the executive director of Life Cycles, and it's the idea to reconnect people to their food sources. And the third winning was uh, a thing called NowPal, which is going to be a, an app that connects um, Naxalone uh, patients to people who have the PACs. And it will be an app online so that they can get immediate assistance. Thank you very much. Very innovative. It's great to see young entrepreneurs. So thank you very much. No other reports? We'll move on to the oh, Councillor. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Councillor Murdoch. Uh, thank you. Uh, nothing, nothing big. Uh, just want to let people know um, the Heritage Talk uh, last week uh, was the last one for the spring. Uh, it was very well attended, standing room only. The next one coming up is the 50th anniversary talk. Uh, so if you can make it, that'd be great. Um, it's coming up in September. On March 8th, uh, we held uh, the Heritage Conservation Area Working Group held two community input sessions. So I know uh, Councillor Kirby and May and Braithwaite were able to attend uh, uh, those sessions, uh, one or one of those sessions each, and uh, they were very well attended. We had about 70 to 80 people come and uh, had some good feedback, so that'll be informing our next stages. Um, we're probably some time away from the next p uh, community input sessions as we work through all the technical options over the next few weeks, so um, that's all I have to add. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very important uh, initiative to uh, protect our heritage, so thanks for doing that. Uh, we now move on to number 26, which is uh, the proposed motion by uh, Councillor Ney, and uh, it was uh, put over from the 26th of February to today to ensure we had all seven councillors here. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, by uh, inviting Councillor Ney to move the motion so we can have a, uh, a, di a discussion and a debate regarding Sh Should I motivate or just move it, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Or, you so move it. Okay, I'll move the motion. And the seconder? Seconder. Okay, it's on the floor now. And let's see, people, yeah, I'm going to ask you because it's okay. your motion okay, to, you. to lead yeah. off. Um, well, um, uh, first of all, I'd just like to say um, I'm, I'm pleased that since the notice of motion um, was introduced a couple of weeks ago that many of our residents um, have had a fairly robust and I would say healthy conversation about housing needs and specifically about secondary suites in at least at, as I've been reading it in the letters to the editor. And um, so we've, we've heard some vigorous debates on both sides of the issue. And I, from my perspective, it's always a good thing to participate in these decisions that affect our lives. But um, with this motion, it's not my intention to open the floodgates on the for and against these uh, secondary suites. So um, we know uh, as uh, 
written in the um, OCP, and we've agreed that a sustainable community must have buried housing stock, and secondary suites are one housing option that can contribute to uh, sustaining the diverse and vibrant community that we all aspire to. So I just want to very quickly identify some of the um, provisions in the OCP that speak to um, support um, where it's been articulated that uh, supports secondary suites. And one is in the housing objectives on page 77 where it says, quote, uh, to reduce the number of unregulated residential units and increase the range of regulated housing options in established neighborhoods. And in the housing policy section number 10 on page 79, it provides a more fully fleshed out description of how to develop and implement secondary suite program and specifically that it takes very seriously that we collaborate and engage our community in developing the program. And then finally, um, in the implementation plan on page 60 in the OCP, secondary suites is listed as an action item in the short-term uh, cluster of, of actions, um, and that is before and independent of uh, the housing strategy that's in the medium-term strategies. So um, the other thing, is, of course, is that Council has already committed to dealing with secondary suites in our 2017 uh, strategic priorities. And we've said that we would do that following the completion of the HCA, which is coming to um, a completion, if uh, I've understood it, in the coming months. So really, all this motion uh, is doing is to ask staff to prepare a report to show the timelines, the work plan, and the engagement process so that we can move this project forward as we said we would and so that our community may weigh in on this issue. I'm just going to um, just um, have council com or council staff comment on, on the issue of our protocol because uh, right now our priorities as I understand them, would see a a HCA finished and then we embark on secondary suites. And what I understand is that the uh, secondary suites uh, issue is just to be overlapping as the HCA uh, uh, comes to a, an end, kind of winds down. So it's just a matter of moving it forward. And I, what I wanted to ask uh, staff was about the protocol when we do change uh, the priorities by either moving them back or moving them forward, creating new ones, deleting old ones, uh, just to comment on that protocol that we've all agreed to as council. Okay. Through your worship, um, so the strategic priorities, both of those items are included on the strategic priorities. Um, typically, if we were to add items to the priorities list, then we would need to revisit um, what staff resources are available um, to do that work. So in this case, it is already on the strategic priorities. What it would impact, however, is day-to-day um, -day workload in terms of land use applications and things like that in order to expedite. Okay. And so if this motion passes, what we would get back from staff is a report on resourcing this uh, this approach, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Councillor Kirby, please. This uh, item has been on our work plan since 2014, since our very first strategic priority session in 2014, and uh, and it was expected or pro um, projected to be completed in 2015. And then that was extended into 20 or to late uh, 2015 and then 2016. And then last year in 2017, when we realized that there, the work hadn't begun and we hadn't hired a consultant to do the work, um, we uh, added that uh, line item to our budget uh, as, as uh, to hire a consultant and to get the work done to build um, the bylaw to, to uh, meet our OCP recommendations. And um, so I, I've been 
looking forward to that work being completed. And then the HCA uh, came before that, uh, before secondary suites. Um, and heritage conservation area uh, work has, is ongoing, but I think very separate from the work of creating a bylaw um, on uh, secondary suites and requires a diff different level of expertise. We have a, 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 an ongoing um, uh, contract with a, a contractor that's doing the work on the HCA um, for us. I think that the management of those contracts is a challenge maybe for staff to manage um, in amongst all the other applications. Uh, obviously, we have 638 building and planning applications currently. Um, we understand the workload is there, but um, I, I don't want to see our work on the OCP uh, or implementation of the OCP or the official community plan um, delayed any further. Bef we are almost to the end of the term and uh, it's very, um, for me, discouraging to be reaching the end of the term and not have changed or implemented um, any of the bylaws, new bylaws, to reflect our, our um, renewal of the official community plan. And the fact that we were able to achieve um, the work of the official community plan in the last term of thre in, in three years, which is a substantial piece of work, um, is is now uh, incredible, and and that we haven't been able to update or change a bylaw um, in almost four years um, is frustrating, and um, I am also feeling frustrated by the the fact that there's some debate in the community about priorities um, that we should be putting the housing strategy in front of implementation of the official community plan recommendations that are short-term and described as critical. Um, there is some critical work that needs to be done and that's, uh, and th th there is more than one um, item that's listed as critical in the, the implementation um, appendix and or schedule. And so I, I, I wholeheartedly support uh, this motion. I think this is, a step in the right direction for Oak Bay. And uh, I, there was um, some talk earlier this evening by a resident uh, that there are other, uh, there's other work that needs to be done that would help, you know, contribute to our tax base. And um, I would argue that this provides a social benefit that we uh, desperately need to provide to our community. And uh, I don't think I need to remind anyone that there is a housing crisis going on in this region and we have to do our part as local government. The provincial government and the federal government are now uh, trying to address uh, what they can through grants and other programs and uh, strategic uh, application of taxes. But uh, it's our role to help provide this, the framework for affordable housing in our community and this although doesn't provide affordable housing to some, it, it, um, it does a, it uh, allow a something within in the missing middle and it offers an option to people that um, aren't able to, to buy in our community um, and also supports those that would need um, some, some, some uh, mortgage help to, to sustain a, a purchase of a home. So, I mean, I could go on all night, but I won't. I, I think that everyone, um, I hope that we would see unanimous support of this motion. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish, wish to speak? Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? No. Oh, Councillor Zelko first. Thank you very much. Um, I can't uh, let this opportunity to chat about secondary suites uh, go by, so I appreciate the opportunity, uh, Chair. And thank you for bringing the motion forward, um, uh, Councillor Nain. Um, I have to question um, why the motion is even on the table. Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, the when I look at our at our um, um, uh, when I look at our strategic plan, the council priorities as presented on the 13th of February, just a couple of meetings ago, it makes it very clear with on the line that talks about uh, reg regulation of secondary suites uh, that uh, secondary suites regulation has not started yet. Council has resolved that this initiative will begin following completion of the HCA project. And we've also heard um, um, uh, through, um, through a chair, uh, through, through to the staff, that uh, it is already in our plan to follow the HCA. 
Um, the HCA is well underway. It uh, the, uh, will be done very soon. We already have a plan in place. It's already going to follow. Um, uh, I, I don't know why this me motion is here because it's kind of strange. If we don't do anything, we're going to do secondary suites. However, if we do something, we actually are going to slow down secondary suites because staff now has to create a report with respect to our council changing priorities to come up with a, uh, a, a report on, on, um, on resourcing a possible overlap change. It's actually going to slow down. Uh, uh, in effect, the implementation of secondary suites. And I don't quite understand why um, this motion would be brought forward in such a manner, unless maybe some position is being laid out for an election. I'm not quite sure what's being done. But effectively, it's a no, what's called, what I refer to as a no op. It is not doing anything and actually slowing things down. So I just wanted to put that on the table. This makes no sense to me. If I, if I was, uh, uh, you know, um, um, wanting to slow this whole process down, I might actually vote in favor uh, because it would effectively slow it down with these extra reports. Um, I, I, I just don't understand that. So I would just simply start right there. Um, if I may continue, Chair? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, another point I'd like to point out is um, in January of 2017, as reported in Oak Bay News, secondary suites replaced infill as a priority for council. Um, this august body, uh, in its wisdom, chose to do infill and then secondary suites at the beginning and met so much resistance and so much um, chaos at the first community meeting that I guess we changed horses halfway through. So I can understand the frustration from some of us around the table that we just want to get things done. But it would be great if we could possibly all work together. And, um, and, that's, and, and when, unfortunately, you change horses halfway through, it's kind of hard to win the race. So I feel we, in some ways we've shot ourselves in the foot with respect to trying to get that aspect done in this mandate. So I just want, that's my second point. Uh, the third point I want to point out, I would like to say, is I'm, I'm very pleased that it was mentioned in the actual motion itself in the whereas with respect to the UBC uh, report. The, um, I forget the name of the report, but I can pull it up in a moment. Uh, the housing, let's call it the housing strategy report, a home for everyone. It makes it very clear in that report <coughs> that every single local government has unique needs and unique demographics and unique ways of implementing the, the, the aspects of the housing strategy. Uh, in, in, in Oak Bay, we, we have sub, such, such wonderful um, uh, needs and, and uniqueness here that I really want to make, make sure that we maintain. Uh, it's also very clear that um, it needs to be a coordinated approach. We cannot, by ourselves, solve this problem. It has to be a collaboration of the federal, the provincial, and the local governments working together. If one of them tries to do it by themselves, it's going to fail. We just, it's going to fail. And, and so the UBCM uh, uh, um, report makes it very clear there has to be collaboration across the levels of government. It sounds like things are lining up, and I'm very pleased to see that that's happening. I'd like to work in concert and coordination with the feds and the, and the provincial folks um, and not try to do it by ourselves. Uh, I agree more rental housing is needed. I absolutely agree with that. But I want to do it in a coordinated way, and I want to do it in a planned way. The UBCM report also makes it clear that one of our m fundamental issues has to do with investor demand and speculation. It talks about how demand management is required. We're not going to fix that. If we build more housing, what is, I believe is going to happen is it's going to get sucked up and put possibly sent off to Airbnb or, or into some other commercial use. And, and unfortunately, what isn't being uh, brought brought forward with this motion is a comprehensive approach that includes reasonable regulation. Right now, we don't do reasonable regulation, in my humble opinion. And unless we include that, I worry that all of these good works will just evap evaporate. And we'll still get people coming, speaking so eloquently about how they cannot get a place to rent. And yet we worked so hard for all of this stuff to get built. And where did it go? It's like, oh, oh, it's on Airbnb or wherever the heck it happens to be. I'm worried that that's going to happen unless we, uh, like Richmond, 
like uh, Campbell River, like, like, like Nanaimo, bring in some very strong regulations with respect to controlling where this rental is going to go, where this housing is going to go, that we're going to work so hard to get built. Um, uh, that's enough for now. I, I probably have a few more things to say. I may come back. Chair, thank you very much. So what I'm going to suggest is that uh, when we come back that everyone has one say and then a second say and then we call the question. Uh, Councilor Murdoch, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just I have some questions. I think maybe I'll come back to some to some comment. If that's, that's probably makes sense. I'd like to hear what other people have to say as well. Uh, this be through you to Councillor Nea, and by all means, you can, may want to respond to some of the other things that have been said here already. Um, but my questions are, I just want to confirm the intent of this motion uh, and the result of it. It'll basically result in two reports. One report back uh, giving us a, some, some assessment of impact on staffing and so forth. Uh, basically on staffing, if we go forward with this in parallel with the heritage conservation area process and perhaps an impact on that process. And then the second report, which is essentially as laid out at, in your motion, which is a, a report that lays out the timelines and so forth. Is that pretty much what we're expecting if this goes forward? Me, well, um, we would want to know impact on staff, yeah, and we would want to know what the timeline, and we would want to know what the um, uh, uh, implementation plan would be and who the leading staff are, as it says there, and the public engagement process. Okay. If I can be helpful, we uh, try to be anyways, uh, with respect to the protocol. The protocol will, first of all, generate a resourcing report, if I can call that, not the second report of which you speak. If we then find that the resourcing report is positive, then we can ask uh, staff to continue. If it's negative, that we can't do it, then we may have to uh, make decisions as do we pull something else out to make it possible. In other words, is there something else on that list of things we've got staff doing that we say, down tools on project X and turn your energies towards this. That'll be a decision at that point once we have the resourcing protocol report. So we'll just have one report at a time. Correct staff? That's the how to work protocol works. Thank you very much. Uh, so Councillor Murdoch. Oh, no, did you want to continue? Yeah, okay. Uh, did you want to continue, Councillor? Sure, Murdoch, thank you. Uh, that was that was essentially my question to clarify. That was in fact two reports. So thank you. Um, so just so I think so we have some. I think so staff can even answer that question about the impact. Can you, is it? Just want to get a sense of what the scope of legalizing secondary suites actually looks like. So is this is the intent of this uh, to them to report back on the costs and and so forth of just legalizing the existing secondary suites? Or are you asking what it would take to kind of create? Um, you know, uh, uh, more than that, like actually expanding it or, or doing some other aspect of it. Is, is your, is the aspect you basically bring in sort of the regulatory framework to, for, to legalizing existing ones or to, to look at this in a broader picture? So we're talking two reports now, a resource Good. report. Okay, so you're asking, I'm just asking for the report that you're asking for. Um, that report is going to come back and, and it's going to be the cost of secondary suites. But the cost of, of le legalizing existing secondary suites and the time effort would be quite a bit lower than if we were going to take a broader approach and look at, at secondary suites as a policy and so forth. So I just want to get a sense of what the, what the scope of what you're asking for is for staff to, to, to bring well, back a report we're on We're going to ask for a resource report, right? That's what no, we're No, you're asking, asking for. for a report on, on the um, – to implement policy regulations and bylaws for secondary suites in Oak Bay. So. I guess the, the question that I'm just asking, I'm just trying to get a okay, sense, because yeah. no. I want, I want the, the report that comes back on, on impact to reflect what the actual ask is. Okay, so my understanding through the mayor, who just asked staff, is that the protocol is to ask first for a, a resource report. Correct. Uh, I'm, so I'm trying to give them some guidance to help them come back with a resource report, because the amount of work that they're going to require depends a little bit on what you're asking for. Right. So if you're asking for a, a sort of more, uh, are you asking just to, for them to get back with the report, is a process that you're envisioning to just legalize existing secondary suites or to, <coughs> excuse me, to, to look at a, at a broader question? Well, um, my understanding is that if they, if they came back with a resource report, what they're going to be uh, exploring 
is the cost it would be to take for them to work towards a project work plan that would include the timelines and the next steps to work towards the, the goal of developing and then implementing a secondary suite program, which would then ultimately include, yes, bylaws to regulate the suite. And, and you're looking at beyond what we have right now, but like an, a, a broader picture of suites across the, the community. Well, that would be sorted out through the consultation engagement process, whether it's going to be a pilot or through the whole community. That, that has yet to be determined. Okay. That's with, the c with the public. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's helpful, I think, for, for staff to get, a, for, for us to get a sense of how much time is required. Because I was trying to work through how much time we could actually, how fast we could get this done. So, not broader policies, but just essentially implementing secondary suites. That's the goal here. The goal is to work with the public to develop criteria to shape a secondary suite program. Okay. And just, you've been around for almost 10 years now on council. Do you, have you thought through the amount of time it's going to require to go through that process? Just on your own? I'm not a secondary suite program expert, but I imagine that we'd probably go through this for about a year. Okay, so, okay, that's clear. So they... I, I'm not the expert. Mr. No, I, I don't think that's Conway. an unreasonable, I don't think that's an unreasonable expectation, but I mean that, it's certainly not before September, October this year. You'd have to ask somebody who's done this before, but that's not what I would expect, given okay. the amount of consultation and involvement from the public. Okay, I just, I, it's, it's, that's, that's fine. I'm just trying to make it clear that what we're looking at here is starting a process that's going to end up partway through, through an election, and the new council is going to be taking it on. So I guess the consideration is where are we spending our money right now in terms of laying that groundwork. And this may be the wise way of doing it, or it may not, but it, okay, that's, that helps my, my clarity. Thank you. Did you wish to make your comments now? No, I'm, I'm curious to hear other people's comments as well. Okay, because I think what I've, have I suggested, well, everyone will have two chances, and, and then we'll make a decision, as opposed to going back and forth. Did I see your hand, Councillor Croft? Uh, no, I really don't have any comment at this time okay. or questions. Okay, Councillor Braithwaite, did you? Sure. Um, I guess I, I want to just reiterate perhaps what Councillor Zelka said in, in that I don't understand why this is actually before us. Um, because it is on our, our priorities list and it seems to me that it was going to come up anyhow and so why does this motion have to sit in front of us? And I think that um, for me, I obviously want us to be a really thriving community and I want to make more op housing options available to our community. Um, but again, and I have said this all along, I truly believe that the um, the um, uh, doing a complete housing strategy is really the way to go. So, so I have difficulty with this motion being before us right now. Um, to me, it's laid out in the in the strategies already, and so um, it's going to be difficult for me to support this motion tonight. Any for a second time, Councillor Kirby? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I. Uh, I'm tempted to respond to everything that I heard uh, that, that I disagreed with, but I, I'll try to keep my comments more, more brief than that. Um, I, I, I think th the reason that it's before us now is because we could see that the HCA was um, the work plan, the report we received from staff recently, uh, Mr. Jones g laid out a, a, a timeline and said that, you know, that work was wrapping up and that we might see it in the next couple of months. And I think that uh, what we were hoping to achieve, or I think Councillor Ney is hoping to achieve with this motion, is to get um, s signal to staff that Council would like to get started on this work um, and that uh, we would like to um, achieve one bylaw change or upgrade in this term that would um, meet our new OCP. The, the HCA is, is, is underway and, and that is one recommendation in that list in the schedule. But as far as, um, uh, and also something that would go work in concert with the um, HCA, I think um, some, of, some of the uh, Official community plan outlines how we might use heritage conservation or heritage um, conversion uh, 
uh, units as, as another form of secondary suites and a form of saving, another means of saving heritage in this community. Um, and with the increase in demolitions and the rapidity of, of uh, the increase in, in uh, the change in this community, uh, which is obvious by our 638 applications uh, before us right now, we I, I think this is urgent and that's why we brought it forward, I think, and why it needs to happen is because we need to signal to staff that this is no longer something that we can um, sit back and be patiently waiting for. Um, you know, there was a, a process for the infill and it didn't, was not successful, uh, uh, you know, and we were, and it was not our decision to change horses. It was uh, staff that reported back that that, that was a, a, a different, that we needed to, to uh, change our direction and maybe down the scope a little bit. Uh, that secondary suites is a smaller piece of work than an infill strategy. Um, and I am, uh, I would just, I just feel that there's an urgency to this, this work and it needs to be done as soon as possible because there are people in our community suffering um, and that uh, need housing now. And the more we delay and the more we debate and the more we talk about protecting Oak Bay and the charm of Oak Bay or whatever it is that the, the, the rhetoric that I keep hearing, um, it's ex extremely frustrating that we need to get on with this work and provide housing for people. That is our responsibility. And it's also our responsibility to provide safe housing. And regulation of secondary suites will provide safer housing. If we continue to bury our heads in the sand and pretend that there are not close to a thousand suites, if not more in this community right now that are unregulated, I feel culpable that if there were to anything to happen to anybody in those suites, that would be on our conscience. We have a responsibility. That's what our job is as local government to ensure the health and safety of our community. And uh, I have brought this up before, but I will remind you that we had a fire in this community where there was uh, some work done with with uh, an, an addition where there was a set there was space uh, for a student and oh. and had our firefighters not opened a door that appeared to be a closet door, we may have lost a community member. And I think that, to me, screams loud and clear why we need regulation of secondary suites in this community. We need to protect our, all of our residents. Not to mention our firefighters who, who may have had a tragedy on their hands. If we had not if we don't do something to ensure that things are being inspected and kept up to code, what does that say? We can't, we can't pretend like, and the rest of the region has already acknowledged this. And that is why this is one of the last communities in the region to regulate secondary suites. We can also talk about Airbnbs. That could be part of the scope. I have no problem with that. I think that would be responsible as well to address that issue bef before it becomes a major um, burden on the system and in increases the uh, difficulty in, in finding uh, l longer term rental. But every community I've spoken to, every council and mayor we've heard from at UBCM and AVICC and any other uh, encounter we've had with uh, local governments in the region or in the province, uh, across Canada have all said, oh, well, we've already done secondary suites when we talk about Airbnbs. This is, that comes as work after the fact because they're already, they've already done that work 10 years ago and now are dealing with Airbnbs as that emerges. So this is long overdue and um, that's why there's the urgency. That's why we want to change the work plan because there is a crisis and we need to do what we can to contribute to solve that problem. Thank you very much, Councillor Kirby. Anyone wish to speak also again? Councillor, I think Councillor Zelko was first, then Councillor Nave. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, I, I couldn't agree with uh, Councillor Kirby more. Um, I wish we were working on heritage conversions at this time. 
uh, that was uh, of, of the options that came forward from the APC at the time where we reset our uh, priorities. Heritage conversions, I always thought, was would, would, be, would have made the most sense, minimum impact on, on the neighbors and maximum ability to maintain our heritage homes. Unfortunately, this body chose to vote against heritage conversions and only supported secondary suites in the replacement for infill uh, back at the beginning of 2016, um, as reported in Oak Bay News. Um, and at that time, I was very pleased to, to see that, uh, that part of the discussion was the Advisory Planning Commission. Um, uh, in fact, the chair even sp uh, spoke uh, of the t at the time and offered to do a housing strategy, uh, which seemed to sway a lot of votes around this table. I'm very interested in a housing strategy. Um, and if I may, uh, Chair, through you, ask a question to, to Councillor Ney with respect to the motion, since I just need some clarification, if, if that's reasonable. Uh, I, if, if I could help, help, help me to understand, what is the difference between what you're asking for and the housing strategy as mentioned in the OCP? Well, you're, 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 you're senior counselor on, on, on and I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, a, a newbie, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Councillor Zelka, I'm really confused about the housing strategy, except that on page 77, it says that a housing strategy identifies opportunities to encourage and support affordable and special needs housing. And so in the context of the way housing strategy is referred to in the OCP, I don't understand actually why people keep saying we need a housing strategy. In a sense, developing a framework for our housing needs does make sense to me, but not the kind of housing strategy that's articulated here. But if I may say also that if we were starting from square one, and I'm a politician in this context, not a planner, so I would really defer to some expertise at the staff level here, but if we were starting from square one, I'd maybe start with a housing, or uh, develop some kind of housing framework to identify the needs and the supply and the kind of housing that this community want and where the housing goes. But we're not at square one. We're in the middle of a spiraling um, uh, uh, dynamic. And uh, as Councillor Kirby said, we're in a housing crisis and we, we need to address what uh, our community is saying are their housing needs and what I've heard loud and clear, what's articulated in the OCP is they want housing options. And the secondary suites are a very gentle, practical way to address that. But let me just go back to the housing strategy. Thank I, you what for I the would like question. to ask is, uh, you know, what I what I would suggest, Councillor Zalka, is I'm not a planner, so to ask me what is a housing strategy is probably better answered by deferring to the expertise we have at the staff table, and, and also whether it's needed to do the secondary suite as per the OCP. Councillor Zelka, did you want to finish because you had the floor? Oh, I absolutely do want to finish. Thank you. But the, the, yeah, the, it's an excellent uh, uh, um, uh, clarification. And um, from, from, from going through the uh, uh, official community plan, which is um, a guideline document, even though it is implemented with a bylaw, it's, it's just something that's advising us on what we have to do and things have to align with it. When going through it with a fine tooth pole, with a fine, fine tooth comb, our OCP says a housing strategy is something that promotes a coordinated approach to address housing issues and collaborate with other local and senior governments. It's something that supports innovative approaches to creative, affordable, and inclusive housing that considers, for example, consider incentive to lower housing cost. I mean, th there's very aspirational things in there. Support second dwellings for affordable and inclusive housing on parcels large enough to support this. This is in our OCP. Encourage the development of rental housing, including identified units within multi-unit housing. Encourage increase, increases in the number of housing units, potentially through smaller units on multi-unit residential development projects. And finally, uh, our OCP says encourage increases in the number of housing units. Uh, oh, no, that's a duplicate. Um, so these are some aspects of, 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 what, our, of what our OCP is calling for at, as, a, as a unified strategy that ad addresses a number of things, which I call a plan. The last thing I want to do is anything knee-jerk. I, I, I would prefer not to see uh, just one aspect get done. I would not want to see what happened, for example, in the, um, in, in the District of Delta, just across the water, where they brought in a secondary uh, suite program that was solely secondary suites. And suddenly, all of these 
existing secondary suites as part of their implementation program. All these people who clamored to have their secondary suites l legalized, they were all being shut down. All these poor, what, uh, 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 what was described as poor little old ladies who were just trying to, trying to make a few dollars, all of them were being shut down because, of course, when you bring in regulations, you have to raise the standards of the building up to proper building standards. You have to spend $50,000, and most of these folks didn't have the money. They were shut down. And what effectively happened was that those with very deep pockets ended up buying up the housing stock, and basically, only a few people were able to get a, a, a lot of money out of some of that stuff. That's effectively what happened. It's unfortunately not um, what I'd like to see happen in Oak Bay. I would like to see our folks stay here and not be forced out. I would not want to see um, a, a, a economic evictions with respect to regulations that's being done inappropriately. I definitely want to have, ha have, have, have um, safe housing. Definitely don't want to have fire traps. We already allow two borders, minimum two borders, you know, uh, with family uh, uh, in, into, a, into a house. That's already allowed, in addition to the family that's already there. Uh, I, 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 we have 26% of our population already in rental housing. I don't understand where the, um, uh, um, the sword of Damocles, was described as the sword of Damocles. I don't understand where, that, where that's happening. Yes, I would like us to do our part, but I want to do it in a planned, appropriate way that takes into account all aspects, including strong regulation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? Councilor Myrtle is going to call the question. Yes, go ahead, Councilor Myrtle. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of straw man arguments here about safety and risk of things being shut down and stuff. I, I think it's worth noting that there's a lot of things that, of merit in what uh, Councilor Nace brought forward here. I mean, I think some of the conversation has been good. The bringing the suites out of the shadows um, I think we don't want to have people living in our community that feel like they're second-class citizens, uh, very, very critical. Um, the idea of raising uh, the need for, for wider housing options for renters for cheaper costs, um, for doing something, I think as uh, Councillor Kirby said, <laughs> uh, it, there's a certain, I, I feel the same frustration about the fact that we are so far in. Um, so, I, you know, my question is, I like to look at all these things is, are we achieving a, 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 a meaningful goal through this motion as opposed to doing something else or, 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 or nothing? And uh, I'll say the negative thing about this has been, and, and again, it was acknowledged here, just the huge amount of anxiety and division that such a motion causes in our community. We, we've somehow driven back to a yes, no question. Suits are good, suits are bad. <laughs> uh, that's not the right question that we should be asking each other. It's, it's entirely the wrong uh, question. It's, um, you know, I, I am bothered by the fact that, w well, we're going to do something. We're not going to do it before the election. So this is going to be a process started. Um, but then we're going to, whatever baseline of work is being done, you know, how is that going to inform the next council um, that comes in and, and has to move forward? And is, is this going to be the priority for that council as well? Uh, it would be nice to see time and energy and money spent on things that can be used, whatever the direction of that council takes. Um, and I think certainly the public consultation process of that would be nice to, to again, have the broader questions asked. You know, this has been raised uh, many times in this chamber. I don't think we're going to sway the, the, the vote that we have right now on the 4-3 split in all likelihood. Um, but over and over again, this council has decided not to act. We didn't do the infill housing uh, when we had that opportunity. Uh, and this has been sort of hanging around for a long time as well. Um, I don't think it's it's healthy for us to kind of keep drifting uh, as we have been. Um, but I think this also, this, this divide is, is to me extraordinarily negative. We have, uh, and, and I think the, the wording of it uh, is, so I mean, we're blessed in this community and we all know this, right? We have an educated and informed residence. Um, I've never talked to anybody who doesn't recognize the need for housing options. And I think in fact, it comes up constantly in conversations about this. Even the people who are most fundamentally against suites, if you sit and talk to them, they recognize the need for other housing options and, and even for suites uh, if, if regulated appropriately. But I, my take on this and what I keep hearing from people is that they ask that such a change is part of a plan and that it considers the needs not just of this particular niche of, a, of inexpensive rental in the basement of a house, but of families, of the elderly, of people who have mobility challenges, of students, of renters, and all kinds of other aspects. 
Um, and there's so many tools available to us that will also help other broader community goals like uh, touched on by Councillor Zelka, the heritage revitalization and dividing up heritage homes into suites um, to help pre preserve some of these older homes that we're losing right now. And, but I think, again, it has to be done to a purpose, right? These changes have to be done to be seen to be accomplishing a goal, not just to be, there's some philosophical, well, sweets are good, therefore we're gonna do it, or sweets are bad, and therefore we're not gonna do it. That's just a ludicrous presumption in my mind. And we're back here again, because we're not talking about this in part of a broader context of a strategy. Uh, you know, um, and I, I use the word frustrated, Councillor Kirby, uh, you know, it's frustrating. This is such a frustrating, frustrating process, because we have a chance, we've had a chance to do something good, right? We've had a chance to actually create something. And but this motion being divisive, it's, it's not do much other than provide a soundbite and start a process that we can't complete this term. It doesn't tackle the broader housing needs that we have in our community. It doesn't really do anything to make Oak Bay more viable or vibrant uh, because it just attaches one very small part of it. You know, I think it just highlights <laughs> what has been to me a pretty spectacular lack of vision and ambition that we've had in this council term. We, three and a half years we've been here and we've done nothing on this. We've tried a couple of times and fallen back. We could have tackled the housing concerns. Uh, we could have, I don't know, there's so many things that we could have done, but the yes, no question on secondary suite is not the right question to be asking as far as I'm concerned. It's not the right question to be asking. So I think the question is, and I, and most people I talk to are asking it is, and I wrote it down here, who wants to see, uh, how do we regulate suites as part of our housing needs? That's the question. It's not, is it good, is it bad? I think we all recognize they're in our community. They're serving a very, very compelling need for our, our community right now. Yes, they should be regulated. Yes, they should be part of a thing. Probably they should be expanded, but they should be done as part of, our, uh, as part of a need. And I'll give a very short example of why I think this is important. Do we want to actually encourage, say, for example, secondary suites close to in density, and this is our only model of density, close to our commercial areas? I'd say we want density close to commercial areas, but do we want this only in places where we might want to have higher density? Surely we should be considering all the housing options that we're considering this. So if we're going to be doing sort of foundational work on some of these pieces, then I think we really have to be doing this not in isolation. And just think through this for a second. We're talking about a year plus to go through this process, which is very divisive, and we're gonna end up with a secondary suite policy. And then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna do what, a duplex policy, and then a, a multifamily policy? I mean, I just, we're gonna be stretching this out over years where we could do it in a very short amount of time. And I don't think this is actually the right way to be spending our money and our time. I don't, I think this is actually fundamentally unwise to be doing this. And I think if members of this council, if we're gonna try to be progressive and do the job of leading our community instead of dividing it, we should be creating policy around housing. I think it's a fundamental first step. And by making this so fundamentally about secondary suites and the yes, no divide, I just have a hard time with it. So uh, I actually have an amendment to make to this motion. And that amendment would be that we just, and it just adds in pieces of here, where it says bylaws for a comprehensive, and I'll say community development and housing plan, including secondary suites in Oak Bay and that the report be brought to council as early as possible following the completion of the heritage conservation area process. And that process should hopefully, at least we get to the bylaw stage by late spring, and we can start moving down that path. I'll second that motion or amendment. Could you just clarify where the words will change? Um, staff be directed to re prepare a report as the opening uh, lines of those? Where it says, uh, there we resolve staff be directed to prepare a report that outlines our project work plan, including timelines, next steps, and lead staff with a stated goal of creating a uh, public engagement plan to develop and implement policy regulations and bylaws for a, uh, a bylaws for, I put in here, a comprehensive community development and housing plan including, and then it goes secondary suites in Oak Bay, and that report be brought to council as early as possible following the completion of the heritage conservation area process. So it changes it from the words bylaws for, and right off of that it's, uh, it says the words that you chose? A comprehensive yeah. community development, I, and I, I think the community development and housing plan is a pretty, 
is, is a good one there. And what that meeting is, we can, we can come back to a little bit, but I think that addresses sort of the broader housing question and, and, and its impact on the commercial sectors as well. Okay. It's moved and seconded. Did staff get the wording of that change? Okay. Thank you very much. Now, discussion on the amendment, please. Go ahead, please. Councillor Kirby. The intent of the motion, uh, the initial motion from Councillor Nee, is to expedite the process and to, s to have a bylaw in place that's at least one step towards having some regulated secondary suites. I would love to see um, more. I would love to see all of the other things you listed. But up till now, between um, some staffing and resources challenges, as well as some delays on the part of um, some members of council, that's why we haven't achieved what, what we set out to do with that OCP. That I would love to expand this and make for all kinds of, um, of the, the vision that the OCP outlined as far as um, uh, more comprehensive housing options being offered in Oak Bay and, and bylaws to support them. But I think we've heard loud and clear from you earlier this evening that this was out of order and rushing things and rushing things I heard from from other councillors that that w this is this is this is not uh, that it, it's uh, trying to rush into a process uh, that's what I heard earlier from other councillors and that um, like why <laughs> I'm confounded. I, you, you've gone from, s gone from saying that we have we are o over taxing uh, and it we have this huge process we're asking of staff, and yet now you're asking for an even larger piece of work. I, I don't understand. We like secondary suites to me is a very tiny change by comparison. It's a small bylaw that's been produced elsewhere in the province over and over and over again in all of our neighbors. We could copy and paste that bylaw and then offer that for public engagement and see how we see where, where the community feels. But we have to get started. We cannot talk about a plan, uh, although this, this, all this bylaw is asking for is a plan, a work plan to get started. How will we do this? How do we, how do we build a, a new bylaw? That's all we're asking for is to get started on the work so that we can get the process underway to make sure that we get something done and something achieved within this mandate. I mean, you were just complaining about the lack of action and the lack of, you know, work that's been uh, achieved. We have had, it's not for lack of vision, I think. You know, we had a huge list of strategic priorities that we overwhelmed staff with, I think, in 2014. You know, if you, how can you ask for something larger and expect that that, and that doesn't, none of what you've just said includes a bylaw change from what I can understand. Why would we do that? Why not just get to the work of changing the bylaws so that we can actually regulate and legalize secondary suites in this community, make sure that they're not in unstable housing for people? Why would we do that? Why would we spend energy on a housing strategy or a plan or a framework that doesn't include actually changing the bylaws so that people can actually live safely in our community and, and feel secure in their housing? Because when we don't have a bylaw, people are insecure in their housing. It's all it takes is one complaint. It's unfair and it's, it's unreasonable and we need to get on with the work, not start creating a plan that will further delay the process, which it feels like we're doing again. I will not be able to support your amendment. Okay, Councillor Nee, please. So um, to Councillor Murdoch's amendment, uh, what I'm understanding you want to do is to replace the project of uh, developing a secondary suite program with um, asking staff to develop a comprehensive housing plan or community plan. I'm not quite sure, something like that. So I, I, I guess my, my question is, I don't understand actually what that's going to contribute to a secondary 
sweep pull around. I, I do agree with you. It would be better to have a comprehensive strategic framework to work with, but we don't have that. And I, 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 I've sort of queried around. That's going to take another year, year and a half to put together. And I, the low-hanging fruit here is secondary sweep. It's been defined and led by a planner in the OCP process, and it's uh, identified as um, an immediate action to take. It doesn't require a comprehensive strategic plan to do this. So I, I, I'm not going to vote. I'm going to vote against this amendment for that reason because it's a replacement of um, what the intent of this. Um, uh, I'll say one more thing about um, the comprehensive plan, though. I'd be willing to put a motion and ask in the report from staff what value, for an opinion from staff, from a registered planner, uh, what value a, a comprehensive community plan or uh, housing strategy, I'm, I'm kind of confused around the terminology, quite frankly, can add to inform uh, the, the work of developing a secondary suite program. That I would be willing to do. Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Croft, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I can't support the amendment either. Um, I, I think that the uh, intent to move forward with a regulation for secondary suites, asking staff to provide a, a report as how we could move forward, and I don't want to see this wait until after the HCA has been completed. I think that they can hopefully do a quick report to us to uh, let us know how this would roll out. I think it's very important for the community. Um, uh, we have, as I demonstrated, we have 465 suites in this community that are actually paying taxes in addition to their usual housing taxes that they're paying the right to have that suite and yet they're being shut down. And what we need to do is we need to regulate to begin with at least those 465 that we know where they exist. And I really appreciate the community's input into this whole issue of regulation. And it is complex because as we go through this process, it's going to touch upon Airbnbs. It's going to touch upon duplexes. It's going to touch upon accessory building use. It's going to touch on home-based businesses, and it's going to touch on heritage conversions. So this is a very complex issue, but we can take each of these ones one at a time and start with the one that's the highest priority. They exist, and they exist throughout this whole community. It's not like we could now divide up this community and say, well, this street can have secondary suites when the neighbor already has a secondary suite and he's not in that area. Saanich went through this. They went to Mackenzie Avenue and everything south of Mackenzie Avenue between Richmond and Cedar Hill Crossroad was allowed to be secondary suites. Within two years, the rest of the community was made secondary suites around the university area all the way from Mackenzie right out to Mount, Tom, uh, Mount Douglas. So to start trying to cloud this with what I think is the most important thing right now, and that is just to get a report. How do we move this forward in this community at this time so we can complete this is the most important thing for me. Um, and I could go on. I have a lot of notes here, and I won't do it, but I will not support the amendment. Okay. Councillor Braithwaite, for first time, please, on the amendment. Thank you. Um, you know, boy, <laughs> it's, um, it's easy to see that all of us want something to happen in the community around um, the regulation of suites and a housing strategy. And that's a great thing. It's great that we have that. However, there's also a lot of confusion because I hear you say 465 suites. I hear you say 1,000 suites. Who knows how many there are? Maybe that's the first question. And I think there was a letter I seem to remember reading something in um, some of the um, correspondence that we need to ask that question first. Is how many suites do we actually have in Oak Bay? Who knows? Um, however, um, going back to something, I think it was you, Councilor Kirby, who said that, um, that you wanted to get this bylaw done within this term. And I just don't see how that's doable. I mean, it, I, I hear you know, it could take up to a year. Maybe we need to ask staff um, if something like this could be completed within the rest of this term because I don't really think it can be. I think it's going to take a lot more time than that. Um, and so for me, 
listening to what Councillor Murdoch said about, you know, here we're going to do the secondary street, uh, secondary suite bylaw first, and then we're going to come back and do duplexes, and then we're going to come back and do triplexes, whatever it's going to be. I, that doesn't make sense to me. To me, it seems that it would be a, make a lot more sense to do it all at the same time. And so that's why I, I feel that I need to support the motion that's, the, the amendment that's on the table, is to do the more complete um, housing strategy. Okay, complete. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, I just want to see if there's any first time speakers. Have you spoken on the amendment? No. Okay, you go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, we received an email from staff uh, one year ago um, with information from BC Assessments, um, and this is public information. Uh, and basically, according to BC Assessments, uh, as of one year ago, there are 475 single-family homes in Oak Bay that contain a basement suite. Whether it's occupied or not is not something they track, but they do track whether there is a basement suite in a single-family home. And th according to them, there's 475 houses, single-family homes that, that are, cap are capable of, of being uh, um, occupied by, by, by someone living in that suite. Um, I think it's very important for us to know how many of these are actually occupied um, so that uh, I presume as part of a secondary suite process we'll have a regulation process because we want our housing to be safe for whoever is going to be living there. Um, and I imagine um, uh, there's an effort maybe for the new housing, uh, maybe for some, some um, more than renovation. Like turning a single family home into a duplex is a rather expensive process. So, um, but I imagine we may want to change the bylaws and have procedures to, uh, to uh, allow uh, something like that to occur in the future, but it is a very expensive process. Um, uh, I'm not sure we're having people clamoring for something like that to happen, but uh, I'm, I'm certainly open to hearing what people have to say in a public engagement process. But I certainly wanted to just uh, bring forward the clarity over that number. I've heard 800, I've heard thousands, but actually there is only 475 houses that could be occupied by, uh, by people living in a suite. Um, I wanted to um, touch as a final thing in the um, OCP at the very end. Um, it actually, uh, it, it, what I like about this OCP is that it offers a suggested plan on what the next council should do, or maybe I sh could say should have done, um, in terms of creating a plan to try and pull it all together. What I'm, it's a breath of fresh air for me to hear this, this amendment sh amended change to the, to the motion. It is something I definitely can support because I, I don't want to do anything that appears to look like, an, uh, like a knee jerk. I don't want to do a one-off. I'd like to do a comprehensive approach that basically it tries to address. If you're gonna, if you're gonna create a little change here, there is going to be an unintended consequence over there. We've already seen the impact of unintended consequences. That's the whole raison d'etre of I thought there's that group called Oak Bay Watch. If it wasn't for the unintended consequences, they wouldn't be here. Um, I don't want to see uh, our community up in arms over unintended consequences that is staring, that is going to basically threaten possible um, uh, aspects of our community which is why I'm very interested in a comprehensive approach. So I definitely will be supporting this, this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any second time speakers? We're uh, going to start with uh, Councillor Murdoch, and we'll do Councillor Kluge first. Um, thank you, Mayor. I, I don't want to go through all the different things that have been said here, I, and I agree. I think the, the question was asked, why, why make this amendment to this if we can do something? And I think there's two primary reasons I'm making this amendment. One. Uh, we've heard, without any expertise required, this is going to be a process to do a public consultation, a full, fulsome co public consultation process in the secondary suites. We're not going to get it done. We're getting into summer. We can't do, you know, we're not, we've traditionally had a tradition of not going out to try to seek public input during the summer, and then we're right into election season in September. So if we're not going to get this done, then we're starting on a process that is only partial in its, in its scope. If we could actually get it done, maybe that's a consideration. The second part is the wording of the motion is such that if the report coming back from staff, it can very easily be, because the secondary suites is explicitly stated in there still, to come back and say, look, uh, here's the groundwork. We can do secondary suites as, as, a, as an early first step, frankly, 
we can do all these other planning pieces and here's you know we can do a fairly uh, a reasonable approach here and go down that path as part of that that policy you know that would be very acceptable to me I think that my concern is and the big reason is that I look at when this motion is made and we have 50 people filling out this call worried stressed concerned about what this means to them that this is moving forward without a consultation process that's just being thrust upon them even though it was in a, in a process already there is a natural and not you know and it's understandable reaction when things people see that things are being done in a hurry or, or being done out of order that they they react and I don't. I think I don't want to see us having secondary suites come in and having it being a divisive part of our community. I just don't. And I think if we do it as part of a process that says, look, we're looking at all the housing options, and it is one of them, and it's totally valid, then we can do that in a way that is going to be, you know, build consensus and build a community that actually will go forward and has other housing options besides this. So to me, this is fundamental to how are we actually going to build a community that has buy-in, that has a, a vision of what we want to be over time. And if, if secondary suites are split out of this as part of the report, that's fine. I'm fine with that. But I think it has to consider all of the options together. So there you go. That's, that's the rationale for it, just to address some of the comments. Councillor Kirby, please. Three very brief things. I just wanted to say that there's been a number of suggestions about the time it will take, the number of suites that we already have in the community, and the amount of work it'll take to, to achieve this, and when we'll be able to actually have a, some kind of implementation. That's exactly what Councillor Nay's motion is asking for, so that we would have firm information from our staff that, was, that would be unbiased and would not uh, be coming from Council, it would be coming from staff and the expertise we have in our planning department. I think uh, we're jumping the gun here by having this conversation about the time it's gonna take and the amount of work it re would require. We don't know that, and we also don't, it doesn't need to be a divisive process. If we had a unified voice from this council showing the leadership uh, on this issue and, and saying that we, uh, as a unified voice, support the implementation of our official community plan, which includes the regulation of secondary suites and other kinds of housing, if we had that from a unanimous support from this council on that issue, if we'd had that all along, we wouldn't be here. But we've had division. And that's because of the leadership at this, at this table. That's because some council members don't support it. And that's why it's not, that's what the message is being sent to the community. I also think that when you say that we're gonna get into election season, I think we're already there. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Nay, did you, okay. So I, I'm just going to make a comment on the, um, on the amendment. When some time back, when we set our um, strategic plan, we looked for, uh, in the area of planning, if you will, we looked for doable, uh, defined, focused uh, projects. The first one was HCA, we decided. Uh, and that was a doable, contained, the scope was. We, we decided on the second one was secondary suites. That's what we decided as a council to move forward. And now the suggestion is, okay, we'll take secondary suites off the table and make some huge comprehensive, I don't think is in keeping with the intent of a council strategic plan. So I think we should stick with the uh, strategic plan which called for HCA followed by uh, secondary suites. All this motion, the main motion does, is just see if, can we accelerate them and do them a little closer together? I'm gonna call a question on the amendment. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, Councillor Kirby, Nay, myself, and uh, Croft opposed. The amendment is defeated. Are we ready for the question on the main motion? And I think everyone has spoken. Let me just make a comment. This, it, this motion is not about the merits or non-merits of secondary suites. I know we've had a lot of discussions about that from, from the public, but it, what it really is is about the timing uh, of what we have already agreed upon is a council priority. And, and the question really comes down to two for me. On the one hand, do we wait until the HC is completely wrapped up and then start secondary suites? Sorry, I changed hands. Do we, <laughs> do we wait for the HCA to wrap up on my right hand and then start? Or is there room to overlap? That's a simple question before us. 
And I'm going to support it because we have now a little more resourcing in the planning department. We have a highly uh, experienced uh, person who's been brought in on a contract between two and three days a week, uh, Mr. Sushak. Sushak, Susak, Susak, sorry. Uh, and he's been in this business, he's retired, so uh, he was known to our uh, the director of um, corporate services. He was brought on uh, to assist. Is he capable of, of, of putting some energy into this? That's something we're going to hear when this report comes back. What is the resources? So do we wait and do back uh, sequence it? Or do we see uh, if it's possible to overlap? That's all we're asked to do tonight. That's the only question. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Councillor Braithwaite and Councillor Zelka opposed. It passes five votes to two. Thank you very much. It was a healthy, good debate. We had very good public input, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate this is a controversial issue in our community. I'm not sure I would agree that it's one that divides us. It shows that we have different opinions about certain things. Uh, so, and certain differences of opinions, I think, are healthy and allow us to move forward. Having said that, let's move forward to the next <laughs> item, and that is 26, uh, which is resolution that we received some correspondence on earlier at 1043 St. Patrick. We received. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what, what was the motion? The move receipt. We're on 27. So we have a live motion ahead of us, in front of us. We don't have to be moved, right? Do you need a mover and a seconder? Mover and a seconder on, on the motion. It's not to receive it. Correct. We're, it's actually a right. resolution. And following that resolution, I will be asking if, there, if the applicant is here and if any other members of the public wishes to speak. Uh, and so it's not to receive this. It's actually to take action on the uh, 1043 St. Patrick. And if I might just be allowed. Move uh, development permit for 1043 St. Patrick Street. Second. My computer. Okay. And it's that this is the one to do with the hard surfacing and uh, what percentage, and there was some issue. Is the applicant here? The applicant's not here. They were here at the community to hold, and uh, if you may recall that discussion we had, is there different ways to solve this? The applicants were happy with this proposed solution. Is there anyone here who wishes to address us on this issue at 1043 St. Patrick? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Is there any discussion at the council table? Seeing none, I'm going to call that question. All in favor? Opposed? No one opposed. You're not here at 1043, are you, for 1043 St. Patrick? No. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> the next one is 2314 Oak Bay Avenue, another resolution. Move development variance permit 2314 Oak okay. Bay Avenue. Second. And this was an issue to do with creating uh, an, some more suites in this particular rental property on uh, Oak Bay Avenue. Is the applicant here on that? Just in time. That's perfect timing. Oh, you've been outside. Uh, been you outside. Just the air quality health index here is pretty awful. So the fresh air outside, and that's where I sit. Well, that's, thank you very much. I'm not the applicant. I'm a resident. All righty. So uh, the applicant is here. Are there any questions for the applicant? We have been through this before, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Is there now, I'm going to um, see if there's any members of the public who wish to come forward to speak to this resolution. And that is essentially, uh, um, hold on, I just have a, a moment. And that's to issue a development variance permit that changes uh, some of the interior uh, layout. All right, and additional multifamily units into the existing building which will not change the footprint of the building. Now, any members of the public who wish to address us on that issue? Okay, come forward, sir, and I would appreciate if you would speak into the microphone. Uh, give us your name. Uh, Ronald Telfer, resident, 205-2314 Oak Bay Avenue. Okay, and uh, 
afterwards, I'll ask you to put your name on the speakers list just where your right hand is, so we can have the spelling of that, sir. Okay. So go ahead, please, sir. I'm supporting the actual expansion, call it that, but the problem I have is with the requirements for parking. Uh, I don't know if you have in front of you the actual plan, but the two parking spots which are shown as numbers 19 and 20. At present, that is where all of the garbage disposal units sit, where there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine garbage cans in that area. There is no provision otherwise. They, they've asked for parking, but they haven't told us where we will now put our garbage. That is my concern. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate you raising that. Now, the applicant is here, or applicant's representative is here. Is that something easy for you to address on short notice? Where will the garbage go is the question. Or garbage containers. We know the garbage goes into the containers, but where will con the containers? The, uh, the, the, there is a space under the building in front of the parking spots where there are a number of recycling bins. Um, I, I know that there are... Um, I'm not sure if it's, is it one or two bins left there now? None. In the corner? I believe there's a, I believe okay, in. Okay, I think a, we're going to have a conversation in this corner, way. In the, uh, in the corner where he's talking, okay. uh, park, parking spot number 20. Okay. That's kind of where this area is. Uh, yes. But there is still some area in uh, between parking stall number 16 and 15 where uh, there's actually quite a lot of space in there. And that's could okay. very comfortably still. Um, accommodate a couple of garbage bins there. So it'll be looked after. It, it Mr. Looked Telford's yes. concern. Is it Telford, sir? Uh, yes, I have. Your Telford's that. concern will be addressed. All right. Thank you. Any, uh, so there no one else wishes to address us on this issue. I'm going to bring it back to council. Is there a discussion at council? No discussion at council. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? None opposed. And uh, we got to number 33, I which is a motion to adjourn. Move adjournment. Second. Move to second. A discussion. All in favor, opposed, not opposed. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for joining us tonight. Appreciate uh, you being here.